Hello, and welcome to Season 3, Episode 12 of Les Odrons. I am Dan, and I am joined, as always, by James, Ben, and Fliss. Say hello, everyone. Hello. Hello, hello. Hi. Hi. Uh, You sounded a little bit like a broken alarm clock there, Fliss. Hello, hello. It's like one of those, like, wake-ups from hell kind of thing. I know. I'm sorry, everybody. I was just so excited to be back. Uh, I'll try again. Hello, hello. Hello, Is that hello. Better? Yeah, that's better. It's hello, much hello. better. Yeah, much okay, better. Well, ben, can um, you cut the other bit out and just put me no, down? No, hello, no, no. I'm just going to re- repeat it and just have you going hello, hello, <laughs> hello, hello for about 45 minutes, <laughs> and then that would be the end of part one. That did that. Did that. Uh, it was like a amazing. An only fools and horses. Can't one. wait. And it's Del Boy uh, waking Rodney up, and he's going Rodney. Rodney, Rodney, like this. <laughs> he goes, Rodney, wake up, you diptych. Like that. And uh, it was cool. Nice. Um, nice. But yeah, it was weird. I want one of those. Yeah. Well, uh, on a similarly weird note, my youngest daughter recorded herself doing like a Michael Jackson hee <laughs> hee, uh, like really loud, and then played it. I don't know how she did this exactly, but she basically played it on loop uh, and broadcast it over every. Alexa in the house and there's about <laughs> 10 oh of them in the house so this fucking thing was just like freaking out going hee 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 what the fuck is going on and then Kate? she went out to school and just left you there yeah. the whole day <laughs> yeah, exactly Kate what have you done um, anyway right uh, let's talk about perfume um, it's been uh, well lots of uh, I guess interesting perfumey bits to talk about because I've, I've actually uh, been through quite a few new perfumes this week um, but I- I'm not going to sort of uh, get into those particularly um, you know maybe if, if chance comes up but I do want to talk about how Fliss and I got let out of the house or our respective houses because <laughs> you know for the avoidance of doubt we live at opposite ends of this uh, great country of ours um, but we were uh, uh, released for the day by our spouses, and we went along to meet uh, Linda uh, Pilkington, uh, founder, owner of Ormond Jane, uh, to celebrate the release of uh, her new perfume, which is called Vanille des Afriques um, Intensivo. Intensivo. Intensivo, uh, which I think refers to the um, concentration Um Rather than the uh, amount full the bottle. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> ben, Ben's gone. Like that. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Are we going to explain no, that, Jake? No, I think uh, anyone with access to the internet should be able to uh, confirm that when a bottle says eighty percent on it, it does not mean that it's eighty percent full. Um, I think we just leave that there for people. Um, Bless his little cotton socks, eh? Um, his matching so, cotton socks. Aww. <laughs> yeah. Little TikToks. Paired with the colour of his hat. TikToks. Excellent. Right. Yeah. No. Let's let's not let's not. Um, but uh, we we did get let out of the house uh, to go along to this perfume launch, and it was a superb time. Uh, for me, the highlight, the absolute highlight of the day, was seeing Fliss. Uh, because that's that's oh, of, uh, of course. course that should be the highlight of anyone's day. Um, but uh, I met up with um, Matt Keane as well, um, uh, Mr. Mm-hmm. Questioning Sense. Um, managed to sneak a couple of pints in with Matt. He's a good egg. Um, and uh, tried some perfumes. Incidentally, uh, tried uh, for the first time Top Shelf. Uh, he bought Top Shelf along, and this is the one. I think James, you had some notes on this. Um, um, and I really enjoyed it, actually. Um, it's from uh, the New Zealand yes. lady. Uh, one Way Bridge. One Way Bridge. One Perfect. Way Bridge, Thank that's you. the one. Uh, yes, I really enjoyed that. Uh, so I got to try that for the first time. And um, also, Matt himself was wearing um, uh, Histoire de Parfum, um, 1725. Mm. Uh, which I've always nice. sort of dismissed as a kind of like uh, powdery shit version of Invasion Barbar, but uh, actually it smells fucking brilliant on him. Um, you know, mm-hmm. so uh, fair play uh, to Matt uh, for that one, and I may, I may at some point seek that out. Um, but yeah, so uh, had a couple of pies with Matt. 
uh, met up with Fliss, went along to the uh, thing, uh, met all sorts of people and, uh, you know, drank uh, probably more champagne than uh, is sensible for me to do in uh, public space. Uh, managed not to, like, do anything outlandish, like, you know, shit on the floor or, or, or sort of, <laughs> you know, start licking someone's face or anything, you know. These are the kind of things I do occasionally do if I get too drunk. Um, but uh, uh, the most important thing... You can't thing, a whitey in Norman Jane, can you? Do you know what I mean? Not really. It's not the done thing, is it? There was a lot of champagne, though. They really <laughs> were very generous on the champagne front. I wasn't drinking because I had to drive my car home from the station when I got home, but I did stuff my face using my hand as a shoveling <laughs> tool with the chocolates from Charbonnel and Walker and all of the all of the macarons that were Indeed. available. Yeah. So it was... It, it literally was like, uh, uh, you know, uh, shoveling. Your yeah, like, oh, I like mm. yeah, I like a macaron, <laughs> and, and it is macaron, isn't it? Because like someone said, would you like a macaroon? I was like, macaroons, mm. macaroons are yeah, different. Macaroons it's are a completely sweetie, different, different, like a sweetie style thing, of dessert. Yes, um, yes, yeah, macaron, yeah. motherfucker. Um, I didn't say that. Um, Isn't the obviously. macaroon like a coconut thing? Like a yeah, chocolate. yes, it is, yeah. and it's it's longer and thinner and it's softer and it's cakier. Was a macaron is two sections of uh, what's the word that stuff? Yeah, <laughs> the two yeah, sections of stuff <laughs> filled with some stuff. With, Correct with some lovely creamy it's, things. It's, it's basically <laughs> it's basically like a luridly coloured hamburger without any meat or bread. Yeah. Yes, that's exactly what it um, is. Yeah. And uh very enjoyable they were. But it was it was really nice and, and it's such a sort of stylish uh boutique as well. I mean it's a small space. But it was the launch of the new boutique as well, because she's moved uh a couple of doors down basically. She has. She? It's still in the um, Royal Arcade. And in she's Mayfair. now Still in the Royal Arcade, but she's swanky. now in the entrance. She has yeah, it's it's very swanky and it was yeah, it was it was it was. It felt delicious to be Absolutely. there. I almost felt like a bit of a fraud, but it was no. Lovely. I I I even no. had an email from them saying how wonderful it was to meet Fliss and thanks for introducing us. So, like, so, no, no, so. Uh, uh, I think you were quite the celebrity, Fliss. Um, so uh, it was all brilliant. <laughs> it was all brilliant, uh, and uh, to the perfume. So the perfume is their new one. It is part of the Four Corners. I don't know whether it's displaced another one or it's now like the proverbial fifth wheel. I think they had three and it's the fourth. Oh, no, they previously had four, though. So uh, they used to have, oh, yeah, they used to have, have the T one. one called, well, it's spelt Q-I, but I'm sure, sure it's pronounced like Chai or something. They had Sarina. Uh, Montebacco and Now Abavud were the four corners originally, um, so something must have been displaced at some point. Um, Maybe it's just gone into the main collection because I can't imagine any of those being booted. Um, yeah, who knows? But uh, I mean, maybe it's the fifth, uh, the fifth of the fourth corners, um, the proverbial uh, third wheel, uh, etc. Um, yeah. And it is. Basically, it's another Geyser Schoen, uh, which is good, because I think uh, Geyser Schoen's best work is for Ormond Jane, and Ormond Jane's best work mm -hmm. is with Geyser Schoen, so it's a, a happy mm -hmm. a happy place. Um, and it is a very, uh, quite airy, uh, to me, um, cocoa, irisy, amber. And, and the way I was sort of thinking of it is it's basically... Um, the like ephemeral, um, artistic, maybe slightly fucking bonkers, uh, and very nimble on her feet, uh, cousin of Melt My Heart, uh, who's very deep mm -hmm. and serious, etc. So, um, I think Phyllis probably had it the other way round, uh, when we talked about it. Well, I, I kind of agree with what you're saying. I, I think it's. When you say it's that airy and nimbler cousin, I think it's definitely the cousin that you'd rather meet um, if you're not into perfumes a lot. You know, in terms of like, I totally get the melt my heart uh, link. I think it's much easier to get on with. I, it's it's not the vanilla that I was expecting at all. It I was because there's so many vanillas have been released and Oris vanillas have been released in the last year that I was expecting something sweeter and 
all of that stuff. And I was kind of a bit like, is, am I going to like it or not? But actually it's very, very dry. There's a quite a medicinal opening with some like carrot seed and pink pepper, um, which gives it quite a slightly spicy feel. And then it goes very quickly into two things. One of them is a very skin like orris. It's very buttery orris. Um, but then because it's a geyser shern and it has all of that kind of molecular feeling, it's very airy and light. So there's, uh, when I was talking to Linda, she was saying she wanted it to smell like your skin, but you better. You know, when I was talking to Linda. And if that was the brief. Linda, you're like, yes. Yeah, oh, yes, indeed, <laughs> Linda, yes. Yes. But basically, if that was her brief, my skin but better, then it's fucking nailed it because it's totally done that. And I think if you are a Gazer Schoen fan, it's a very modern, dry vanilla with a lot of oris in it. And if you are a Gazer Schoen fan and if you're an Ormond Jane fan, you're going to love it. I think it's going to be a massive crowd. Did she mention um, natural materials? Is there, is there yes. oris butter in it? Yes. Yes. Yeah. So she said that the Oris butter that they're using is the one of the most expensive um, materials they've ever used in a perfume. And they also, she also talked about the vanilla. Normally the, they use um, distillations of the mm. pods, but to get this particular very dry feeling, they were scraping out the seeds. And I don't exactly understand what she was, how she was ex- describing the extra, ex- sort of the mm-hmm. extraction of the smell of the vanilla, but it comes from the seeds and not the right. pod, and maybe that's why it doesn't smell. So when people say vanilla to me, I think very sweet, think I think cake. very boozy. Um, is it cake? And I think cake, and this is absolutely not cake at all. Um, it's it's very very classy, it is. and I'm going to I'm going to be completely honest and say I don't know if it's entirely for me. I do like it, but I don't know if it's entirely for me. But I have an incredibly well dressed, well heeled cousin called Jane, who is going to go head over heels okay. for it. She's just can, going to be can so Jane come on the podcast? gorgeous. <laughs> Maybe yeah. she should. Please. Maybe she yeah, should. That'd be good. Um, yeah, that'd be great. Um, she's just she's just a lot classier than I am and I think I, I think I like <laughs> a lot can't be a bit true. more um. I mean honestly I, 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 th- I think back to some of the stuff that you've said over the last few weeks and I, and I wonder to myself is it possible is it really possible that any woman out there could be more classy than you and and you know I don't I just don't see it <laughs> we're not going to talk about Lady Hell um, well but, we probably will um well, yeah, um, but I think that um, there is it, there, there is incredibly dry, classy, slightly spicy mm, feel to it that you know someone like my cousin Jane is just going to go head of your hills for. I, I like a little bit more dirt and oomph, maybe, but that's a taste thing, and it's nothing to. Um, it's, it's just purely taste. Mm. If I'm uh, honest, I, I'm, I, yeah, yeah. I, I would hesitate to say I loved it. Um, I do think it's very good, though. It is very enjoyable. Yeah. Um, I mean, I, 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 I guess quite like the, the sound of it, to be honest. Yeah. Well, mm-hmm. so here's the thing: if you like quite a few Ormond Janes, particularly the work Gazer Shone's done for the house. You're gonna like this one, right? It, it, it's it's not yeah. like you're gonna smell it and go, "Oh my god, that's so different to everything else." It really isn't. It's got that fucking DNA that you would expect. So if you like a lot of their stuff, you're gonna like this. Um, for me, I don't think it will eclipse uh, Nawab of Oud, uh, as my favourite from the house, um, and um, I, I'm I'm not sure, but I think I kind of went reasonably anosmic to it quite quickly like i know it's still there because i could smell it occasionally like you know a waft in the wind and stuff but just sitting there doing nothing you know uh well just sitting here like recording a podcast or whatever i I wouldn't really notice it kind of thing i'm sure other people would notice it on me um, so I was going to ask a question right but like hmm. at the end of when you're talking about i'm going to bust it now because it's sort of comes off of that but what goes on at these things, right? So basically, like, I'm, what I'm imagining, right? You tell me if I'm right, because I imagine well, a lot of listeners are not sure party, either. But basically, hell. do you go into like this room, <laughs> then they sort of like tell you a little bit about a, about a perfume, pe- then you all go and spray it, no, and then no. you hobnob yes. and talk. So, like, so, so I, well, yeah, I mean, you, you kind of all turn up, 
and someone ha- hands you some champagne or some fizzy water if you're me and mm. you're driving um and then you go and stand in the corner and neck a whole load of uh chocolates uh that they've all put out for you and the creator may or may not have a have a chat for ev- with everybody mm. or they may just come around and you might just grab them and just go say tell me about yeah. the perfume there for everyone to smell right so uh, oh god a lot of it yeah there's a lot of it about it's like like because dan's saying about becoming an osmic to it and i was thinking like if everyone in like every fucker in that room is smelling like this perfume and this perfume is everywhere in the air like uh, 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 do you does it you, you sort of almost become like not a nosmic or, well, or like indifferent I, I, i'm gonna you? again be very honest and say that on, on my insta <clears throat> that day i said thank you so much for hosting such a lovely time but i'm not going to review the perfume on this post because i felt like i i i, it, I was so surrounded mm. by it that i had become a bit yeah. nosmic to it so i did need to have need to spend the next three days wearing it before we recorded this in order to have any sort of yeah, opinion yeah. So, um, um I, I mean just Going back to your question about how the events work, I can be a bit of a wanker here, and so I've been to a few of them, um, mm. and, and they vary quite substantially. So, um, uh, I, you know, I've been to ones with, um, what's it called, Paolo Terenzi, right? Where Terenzi sort of sits up on a stage, talks all about it, and then they bring round, like, blotters with it pre-sprayed, and he keeps talking about it, and everyone sniffs it, and then it's like, oh, thank you very much, right, you know, uh, any questions? And then uh, sort of everyone sort of gets up and ambles around a bit for a bit of a plenary at the end, and and you have a bar of chocolate and fuck off, Um, that kind of thing. Um, this was very different. This was just like everyone came into the boutique. People were coming in and out at different times. And they just had a couple of people walking around handing out champagne. I mean, it's a small space, right, as well. Uh, I mean, it's a, mm-hmm. it's, a, it's a reasonably large space for a perfume boutique, but it's a small space to put like 20 people in. And uh, so they just have these people, you know, walking around trying to force feed you uh, alcohol. Uh, there's a few bottles of the perfume scattered here and there, and Linda tries to get round as many as possible, talking to people about it, spraying it on blotters, giving people things to smell, and, and just talking enthusiastically about the brand. And it was basically a bunch of perfume and beauty um, bloggers, reviewers, uh, 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 you know, there was a couple of brand owners. Podcasters, we had we had our, uh, one of our... Oh, yes, Susie, you know Susie, Susie Nightingale. Uh, uh, Su- Susie was yeah. there. You know what yeah. I'd like to do? If I, if I launch a perfume, right, my perfect yeah. launch, right, I'd get all of these, like, influencers in a room, right, and then I'd lock the doors and leave. And I'd spike all the drinks with pet, and I'd have shit those of weird <laughs> quotes all over the walls, right? Like about the perfume. And then if you go to touch a bottle, it's wired up to like an electric shock, so they get shocked. And so like all all evening, they're just fucked off their tits and just electrocuting themselves, trying to smell my perfume. And I'd be at home just my feet up I, laughing to I myself. I genuinely worry. Well, I have to you. say, Ben, if that was your launch, I would love yeah. to come because uh, there was a, there was a time in the two thousands, <laughs> now you're shadowing, when Kent was my drug of choice. Oh so, really? Oh, yeah. this is interesting. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Okay, well, um, that's mad. I'd more or less stop taking drugs by that age. Um, I'd only just started, but I was very late because I was too busy being Hermione Granger. Oh, yes, I remember. <laughs> late a, a late yes. head case. That's a late um, So anyway, it was, it, 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 was, it was all very nice. And then as you fuck off, they give you a little bag with the perfume in and they say, oh, thanks for coming. And uh, that was that. It was great. Um, really nice. And then Fliss and I went... Uh, to a couple of places, we went to the Santa Maria Novella boutique, yes. uh, which was awesome. They are so, oh, so, nice. so enthusiastic in there. Like, uh, just fucking... Where is um, that? Across, it's on across the, Piccadilly, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, it's across the other side okay. from the Royal Arcade. Um, it's on the same side mm. as the Fortnum and Mason one. It's a little uh, arcade, and it's got um, it's got the Marc Antoine Barwar uh boutique as well in that same arcade um but uh anyway we went in there that was lovely um smelt loads of stuff so friendly and the customer service is amazing there was a somebody put a a message up on our facebook and said oh i've never felt 
like w- well enough put together to go in. And I would oh, say no. anybody who doesn't feel as if they can go into the Santa Maria Novella um, shop needs to just give go your head in a wobble and go because in. They really, they're great. They really don't give a shit. They were just, they were so kind and handing out samples and chatting. I bought two things there. I bought this, which mm-hmm. is uh, body cream, Melagrano body cream, which is basically I'm <laughs> using it as, as a hand cream. Um, so that's absolutely lovely. But I also bought this, um, it's like a sort of porcelain or clay uh, pomegranate. Um, and it's infused with the Melagrano fragrance. And you basically, you just put it in a room and it just blasts the room with the Melagrano fragrance. And I've had to take it out of the bedroom because it's too fucking strong. So it's like, it's, uh, it's like up on the top uh, stairway and the smell just sort of cascades through the house. It's fucking bananas. Mm. It's really good. Um, and then we went to Fortnum and Mason as well. We managed to fit Fortnum's in, didn't we? We did. Um, we did. Yeah. Uh, lots of smelling there, some of which is in my What Have You Been Wearing yeah. uh, reviews. Uh, like, I really like Fortnum's. I like it because it feels really chilled out in comparison to some of the other big mm. shops. So, like, in comparison to Harrods, you don't have the hard sell. And in comparison to somewhere like Liberties, which I feel always feel is a bit small and a bit Shit. squinchy. I, th- I think the Liberty. Well, I just feel like it's not. D- it's not designed. Yeah. It's just not designed at all. And they have nice things in there, but it's just not laid out. And it's just everything's just piled on top of each other. Where I feel like the Fortnums is well spaced out enough. There's no hard sell. A couple of times people came up to me and went, "Are you okay, madam?" And I was like, "Yeah, I'm just having a play." And they were like, "Are okay, you okay?" Cool. Not really, me- but I yeah. don't need any help. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but they just left me to my own devices, and I. I've always liked going into Fortnum's, mm. and uh, I continue to do so. So uh, I, I feel like I've been talking for ages. So just a super quick rundown from me from Fortnum's. Uh, the uh, Liquid Imaginaires um, have a couple of really good ones. Uh, I had never tried them before, uh, but I really enjoyed um, Aimé de Coeur and one called Liquid, which turns out to be a Quentin Biche, which I reviewed briefly on my Instagram today um uh the new zergeoff mm-hmm. torino 23 is dog shit um uh oh disappointingly the rubius ones i thought were terrible uh so rubius blur which is a quentin beach one which i think we reviewed very very early on in the podcast i love that perfume absolutely love it um they have got like a, I guess it's like a diffusion line um, of these quite brightly coloured bottles. Um, and I had the green one called Quersha, which is quite nice. But the other three I tried are dreadful, just absolutely dreadful. Oh, no, you gave me the strips and I just thought they were all yeah. awful. They, they smelled really generic, really chemically and... Some of them smell quite a lot like a sports frag, and we all know what yeah. that smells like. Yeah, I didn't enjoy those at all. Just uh, um, and then uh, mm. Maitre Parfumier Gantier, that house is all quality. Mm. Um, I've got to get seriously mm-hmm. into that shit. And I think, sorry to uh, uh, keep going. I think that is actually it for me. I can't talk about perfume any mm. longer. So um, that's this podcast fucked. So. Uh, uh, yeah. Shall I shall I quickly do one or two yeah. and then because I think most of ours are together, yeah. aren't they? In, in a way, the other one that we smelt when we were in Fortnum's was Merchant of Venice Andalusian Soul, which is something that I had smelt about a hundred years ago, and I kept coming back to it, and it just smelt like rum and raisin ice cream. And for a while, I was like, oh, this is nice. It smells incredibly realistic rum and raisin ice cream. Very expensive rum and raisin ice cream. But then I just went, I want to eat it. I don't want to wear it. And I think we both had the same feeling about that. Last week, it was Mr. Um, Kincense that you were talking about, wasn't it? Much- was it was amazing. It, it, yeah, I love Mr. Kincense. I think... Merchant of Venice for me are really hit and miss. And some of their early releases I think are really good. And then they've gradually become more and more generic. Um and they they have like I think they have that the the Baccarat Rouge copy and they, they they have a Tuscan leather copy and all of that stuff. Some of the earlier stuff I think is delightful. 
I can see how this sits with their earlier stuff um, as a modern gourmand, but I'm not into gourmands. So in terms of it being an interesting gourmand that was earlier in their release of their line, I can see how it was... It's not a copy of anything. I would absolutely say it's not a copy. It's, it's very much theirs. But just for me, it was just a bit too sweet. Um, but it's nowhere near as sweet as a lot of the gourmands that you get these days. Um, it just wasn't mm. for me. I love the bottles, but I I think that they start... I think it's like a bit like L'Artisan. I think they started well. And then more recently, they've just become more generic and have lost their way a little bit. Yeah, and, um, I think it's in order to yeah, it makes me a bit justify sad. their existence and survive, isn't it? Um, which mm. is sad, really. But yeah. um, I'm just thinking, I thought, yeah, I know that one because I, I had some samples and I wore that Mystic Incense the other week because I dug them out because I remember Fliss saying that she'd mm-hmm. worn one. I thought the bottles are so beautiful that you just enthusiasts oh, like us are just... I would buy exactly, them just for just, the bottles. We're just hoping that there's one, aren't we? Just like, there's got to be oh. one good one just so I can get one of those bottles. You, we're all the fucking same. But what did I say about Andalusian Sol? It's only short, so I'll read it. Um, this is from 2020, I think I tried it. Um, the opening few seconds are gorgeous, but you can feel yourself gaining about 20 pounds and developing type 2 diabetes upon the, f- oh. upon the first <laughs> sniff. Um, it's an indulgent vanilla scent gourmand nicely balanced not too thick however it's still absolutely too sickly and not enough uh, interest to make it appeal to me Uh, I get annoyed by it after minutes seconds even that's what happened (laughs) that's it I think I think I completely agree I think I completely agree yeah it should be called Mm. rum and raisin ice cream and just be done with it Mm. cool okay did you Mm. manage to try the thamine that we snarfed you a sample of? I did, uh, I did, I did, I did, I did. And I like it, but again, I feel like it's, it has an incredibly modern feel, which is just not my bag. So the Thamine has got this very... This is Chords, by the way, the latest this uh, chords, Christopher yeah, Chong. The, the newest Chords. And it's got a very co- sort of almost cologne top. Mm. The top smells almost cologne But then when it dries down, unfortunately, I found the base to be quite a poopy oud base. Oh, um, and it was, it was, there was a very leathery dry down, which is a good modern leather accord. But the barnyard in it, I just couldn't get away from. And it, and it probably smells different to different people on different skin. And... My husband, I, when I walked past my husband, when I came in wearing it, he went, you smell nice. And I went, oh, cool. And then I put my wrist underneath his nose and he went, oh, my God, you smell like a farm. Oh, wow. <laughs> so I know. So there's this, there's like, there's this fluffy floralness to it. But then close up, both of us felt it. There was the, the, the leather and the oud was just a bit too much for both of us but that doesn't mean if you're not but i'm not an oud fan and neither is he so i don't find it again, at all tasting. really i mean there's there, there is we see there, there is something go. a little bit kind of um like a cypriol or something just a little bit kind of um, yeah i wouldn't say skanky but definitely something a little bit off kilter which uh which i, I think I is really get, quite I cool uh, i i enjoyed it actually yeah um, I couldn't get I couldn't get away from the the the, the barnyard at the cool. bottom of it, unfortunately. Cool, cool. All right. Yeah. Any other interesting f- facts to report for this? No, other than uh, I have samples of I've got a ten mil of the Ormond Jane plus a tasting set and uh, the, the a sample of Thamine to give away for listeners and if you follow us on insta and facebook and also patreon i'll be putting um some posts up about that so please watch out i won't yeah i won't send anything out until it's uh till we've until we've published so you can sniff groovy groovy ben 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 dad ben dad (laughs) ben partridge episode oh yeah (laughs) Tell, tell me something, Ben. Um, tell me something. Well, I've actually had quite a boring uh, week because I've um, 
ridiculously overspent on a guitar that I don't need. So I decided. Excellent. To... Why? Why? Because uh, it was a beautiful colour. <laughs> yeah, I mean, to be honest, I, I buy perfumes for the same reason. I guess it. I guess guitars probably are more expensive, though. Uh, somewhat so. It, it was from. It was from Japan. Some... So I had to import it from Japan as well, and I got stung by the fees as it came in, which was a bit harsh. But never mind. Um, you shouldn't get. You shouldn't get charged import fees from Japan. Really? Yeah. Okay, well, I'll be looking into that because that's a lot of money. Um, uh, is, is it, um, <laughs> what colour is it, this beautiful colour? Uh, Sherwood Green, metallic Sherwood Green, which is basically metallic British racing green. What guitar is it, sorry? It's a Fender Jaguar. Oh. Ooh. Just yeah, I was like going to say, haven't you, got, haven't you got loads of Fender Jaguars? <laughs> Yeah. Uh, it's a bit of a thing. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, it's just I, I, I just love the colour when I saw it, and I was just like, I need that. Um, so I bought it. So anyway, this, to get this to perfume, the reason I've had a bit of a boring week is because I've been going through because I've got perfumes that I know I don't like that are worth quite a lot of money. So I've been going through sort of smelling those, and one of them was Bortnikoff Chypre de Nord, which I've got for sale on a group. So mm. I probably shouldn't slam it too hard, but actually, it's a very good fragrance, a very nice fragrance, but it's. It'll have been sold by the time this is released. Actually, but I don't know. I think it's a good price, but um, but I think what I don't like about it is something that's really I've smelt before in other places. It's got deer musk in it. It's got like real deer musk, and basically, it's like a peachy sheep, like peachy mossy fragrance, which is quite nice. But then it has this like deer musk element to it, which smells great at first, but after a few hours, it starts just really grinding you down because it has this like mm. like fatty, meaty element to it that you get with like natural animalics. And I've smelled it before when I smell of, I had a sample of a perfume that had like real, um, the beaver one, what's that? I always forget. Um, castorium? Castorium, that's it. It had, it had real castorium in it and it, and that had, had the similar vibe where you get this like it's almost like this this fatty meaty like room temperature meat uh sort of smell um but it's almost textural rather than a I smell mean, if it hasn't sold by now <laughs> then yeah. Yeah, you're a bit fucked well right. i mean Oops. hopefully no <laughs> yeah, one, yeah, yeah. none of your potential buyers are listening to it that, that, that's <laughs> It's fascinating, though. It's, a, it's an interesting fact. But, but see, this is the reason I bought it in the first place. Because when I bought it, I was like, okay, I, I, I want to smell a perfume with natural deer musk. And so I kind of bought it for that reason. And I knew it was going to be probably not my jam. Um, and yet it wasn't. Um, so, so yeah, I wore that. Like I say, it's not, not a great review. But it is actually a very nice fragrance. And I'm not just saying that because it's so. It's really nice. But you've got to be... I think okay with natural animalics, which is it's quite a tough cookie. Like I like yeah. shitty stuff, don't I mean it? We all know there's some rank stuff that I like, but <laughs> natural animalics are not my thing, man. Like there's there's I mean I don't it's because I'm a vegetarian maybe, but there's just something a bit meaty about them that I just <laughs> it turns meaty. my stomach a little <laughs> meaty. Yeah. It smells a bit like a kebab. Meaty perfumes uh, for the vegan. <laughs> exactly. But there's probably an entire um, episode in that. Just meaty perfumes for vegans. Yeah. It's quite <laughs> quite a niche episode, I reckon. Um but yeah, other than that, I say I've been going through stuff that's not very nice really. Um one that I did smell that I do still like and as soon as I sprayed it, I was like, I'm not selling that. It was a uh, Cinque Canto Mirabile. I think I've spoke about it before, but that's fucking great, man. It's like a vanilla perfume. But that instantly puts you on the wrong foot because it's not, it's it's like bright and fresh and like it doesn't ever get heavy. It's got incense in it. It's really nice. Uh, it's uh, it's a bonkers perfume. Um, it's I, I, I weird, just, isn't it? I just think it smells like a sort of um, like a, a bourbon uh, vanilla milkshake kind of thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But it's, Very it's, weird. it's not as sickly or as heavy or as dank as you might... You know, because as soon as you say something like, oh, a, a vanilla forward perfume, you imagine something big and sort of a bit oppressive and, you know, in the in the summer could be a bit cloying, but it's none of that. It's all quite Fuck. light and breezy. For... I can I can actually remember the last time I wore that perfume. I was just thinking, oh, I haven't worn that for ages. When did I last wear that? And it was when my daughter was applying for high schools um, and she's now in lower sixth. So that must have been... <laughs> 
<laughs> Three years ago? Four years ago? Seven years ago, maybe. Oh, shit. Yeah. <laughs> fucking mad. Anyway. Have you still got it or have you sold it? I have no idea, actually. I don't know. It's, it's, I'll, it's have a, I'll have a like, rummage oh. around. No, I probably sold it, to be honest, but uh, that yeah. would explain why I hadn't worn it recently. But I'll have a rummage around. Yeah. Well, I was going to say, I was like, oh, I haven't worn that for a while. You know, probably could put it on the to sell pile sort of thing. Because I've also been thinking, like, you know, I could probably pare down that, mm. that that collection quite heavily. And as soon as I sprayed it, I was like, fuck no, this is mine. Mm. Like, no one's having this. Yeah, this is really, really good. Um, good. Yeah, no, it's a great perfume. Um, Isara, did I talk about that last time? You did. But then we've talked about that before anyway. I've been wearing that a lot since I bought it off you. Uh, <laughs> um but yeah, that's about it. So quite a boring week. So because I've been wearing a lot of stuff that frankly isn't very nice. Um, so yeah. winning, yeah. winning. Okay. Yeah. Well, uh, I mean, uh, James. Uh, before we get into the full fourteen, uh, of which I am hoping there are in fact fourteen. Um, mm, yeah. Oh, woohoo! Uh, my inner compulsion is sated. I've at it, it then. Done. Fucking. How about it? May I say, by the way, you are looking today like you've just emerged from a uh, 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 cricket match. <laughs> yeah, that's what, it's, uh, that's it's, what Jenny said. Because it's, it's Mother's Day, I, I've put in a bit of uh-huh. effort. I thought I'd put a shirt on. Because, um, yep. you know, you can't knock about in your in your trackies and, your, you know, with your socks tucked in and all that, can you, when you go into... Don't know. Well... I do. I did. Can you speak yeah. to my husband, yeah. please? Yeah, you're making the rest of us look bad no, here, James. But I but, yeah. usually have this sort of scally, <laughs> scally chic going on, but I'm, uh, I'm, I'm being a bit more of a kind of cricketer. Anyway, this is a kind of a tennis jumper, anyway. So, oh, um, tennis, yeah. yeah. So, um, but it, now I can I can get where you're coming from with the cricket. But since yeah. we are quite upper class, because look, I'm wearing horse riding, uh, horse riding leggings today. That they're called jodhpurs, darling. I don't know. They look, they got, they got... Horse riding leggings are jodhpurs. Rub, rubber bits to grip the jodhpurs. horse. Yes, that's a jodhpur. Rubber bits to grip the horse. James is a big fan of... Well, it's uh... not to grip the horse, actually, because th- those sections would actually be on the saddle, so it's it's just to give you more traction. Saddle with the traction. <clears throat> <That's>... Exactly. <laughs> which, is, which is what I need it. in my life. I, yeah, I, I know. I, 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 I thought I'd mention it. I always felt I lacked traction yeah. with the leather. I thought um, I'd mention it. You've got a little steel yeah, horse. a good name for me. You've got a little steel horse that you pop about. You've still got a motorbike. A steel horse. I don't know what I'm talking about. <laughs> just, yeah. just ride my dog around the, um, the lounge. Cool. All right. Um, <laughs> so... Uh, <laughs> no, it's just the histoire. Just, just history, the perfume. I'm just gonna just be history, me. perfume uh, history. 1740, uh, the Marquis de Sade one because Dan said that not he'd worn it. Someone else had worn it the other week. Did you? In the last podcast, yeah, you did, did I? Anyway. And I went mentioned it. I was like, someone, oh, yeah, someone I mentioned it last podcast. Yeah, tomorrow. and so I did. Podcast that we recorded. Um, yeah, it's a really good uh, immortal leather. Uh, really, really heavy. I mean, it's like it's almost like the example of a really heavy indie done by somebody who knows what they're doing. No offense to indie perfumers, except ninety percent of them are shit. Um, but like, ba- basically, it's like that. But imagine like just really handling the materials well and stuff, and making what is a completely over the top, you know, perfume. This kind of honeyed, immortal, almost pissy. Like it's m- mad, but it is leather ultimately in a kind of way, and yeah, it's a it's a great it's a great perfume. Um, then I wore Bijan for men because again I think we mentioned that, and I'm just like I'm gonna fucking put that on that for like however much stick it costs. Did you stick your like finger 20. through the hole and go? <laughs> <laughs> I, of, of course, I always do. Yeah. That. Um, I think it was my tongue. I don't know. Um, no. Uh, so anyway, Awful. no, the, the Bijan uh, is basically about 20 quid and it is a fucking 
amazing perfume it's brilliant even like it's quite a new bottle it's still really good it's kind of peppery man business woody spicy mossy thing but it mm. just lasts for ages it's really really good um yeah I, I love it i love it i think it's amazing um then could have easily been on my list of uh you know for the 200 quid that would be like a an amazing one to get for for really mm. very little money then i wore cologne um cologne francais by celine again i mean that was one that i was like hmm yeah okay they've done a, a, a fresh cologne type fragrance um but it's fucking brilliant and it's actually got a little fig like a little fig thing that i didn't realize to begin with and it's really good it's a really good uh classy white floral cologne fresh fragrance with a bit of fig really good from celine um then i wore egoist because again i think we've been when someone mentioned egoist no you mentioned sandalwood uh by um gof trumper someone did uh sandalwood cologne uh and i jokingly said oh yeah for fucking morons it's like egoist or something like that <laughs> but it is really like egoist. i get the egoist connection and that is huge praise for you know that perfume really to to sort of be like that or vice versa i don't know i mean which one came first i'm assuming good egoist. question don't know um but gof trump has been around a long time so maybe mm. that might have been around before it i don't know yeah. but i get the connection i much prefer the egoist to be honest um mm. i get i totally get the connection i understand the price disparity and all that and yes i actually the gf trump has been on my list of things to get for a long time so a very very good uh sandalwood fragrance but i think agui just tips it a bit with um, yeah it's kind of slight rose to it, isn't it just as a fyi um mm. i am like 98 percent sure there was a guy in the gym the other day wearing Egoist, and I was uh, like, "That's a bold fucking move, wearing egoist to the gym." I mean, cool. I am, I am here for it, but that is a bold yeah. ass fucking move. It's the least gym evoking fragrance, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, um, exactly. Yeah, hey, yeah. egoist platinum, so, maybe. Which yeah, is an egoist entirely platinum. different perfume. Mm -hmm. But that is definitely a gym fragrance, and egoist is certainly not. Mm. Uh, no, no. I was going to say something else, but I'm not. I'm going to leave it for now. Go on. Because we, we don't know if it's come off yet or not. Well, say I may have acquired. Oh. Ooh. What are you thinking? Oh, no, no. I, I just, you were gonna, you, well, we don't know yeah, because you mentioned to us and then you wouldn't tell us. But, uh, I may have acquired uh, you, 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 Chanel you wouldn't tell us. <gasps> yeah. Is that what you spent um, all the money on? Yeah. So Nutty uh, bastard. Yeah, I know. Is that from Rich yeah, Mitch? Got one of those. Uh sort of, yeah. Yeah. He was he was instrumental in the uh He facilitated it. Yeah, he, he did facilitate it. Oh, he's such an enabler. Oh, fucking too right. It's been all week I've had it with him. Right. <laughs> he's been, it's terrible he, enabling. He, he's not bought. He sends me pictures of things and goes, oh, this my friend's got this for sale. What do you think? And I'm like, I want that. I really yeah. want that. I want you know that I want that. You know that I do. Um, it, it's... Um... Uh, it, it, it's a little bit out of character for you, though, James, isn't it? Buying lots of perfumes. I mean, uh, yeah. It, since we started this podcast, incredibly disciplined. So yeah, since we started this podcast, I don't think you've bought more than a couple, and and they no. tend to be just cheap things um, as part of the podcast research, almost. Um, really? Yeah. Or things that I've been, been like, no, I, you really should get that. Yeah. You've been incredibly disciplined, and then it looks like you've just kind of had uh, what what alcoholics might class as a, a bit of a relapse recently. <laughs> I have, I have, and uh, it's felt good, but also I think any of the things that I've bought. Um, well, I mean, it's a bit of a detour because they're not all on my 14, but fuck it. You know, there's, you know, never let it be said that I don't take up shitloads of time on the start of the fucking <laughs> Nobody podcast. is saying that. But here is uh, an Egoist. 
Equipage. Uh, sorry, no, it's not no, fucking not equipage. equipage. It's equipage. It's equipage. Yeah. equipage Hermes. Um, and I thought, yeah, go on then. I'll have this. And rich, yeah, yeah, I mean, it's rich, great. Yeah. It's really good. Because uh, he sent yeah, me a message yeah. saying, do you want to like, buy any yeah. fragrances? Uh, I mean, <laughs> I was just like, no, I didn't even look because I try not to spend money. But oh, we had loads well. in there. Yeah, loads of good stuff. I mean, <laughs> smelling doing? Just now like, what? <laughs> just WhatsApping everybody in the fucking UK. Going, Hello, boys, who want to buy some perfume, eh? Yeah, <laughs> basically. Um, so I got this because, uh, well, let's just consult my 14. Because, <laughs> oh, no, it was the following week. But anyway. Oh, I will come back to that in a minute when I, when I get to it. Right, okay. So, then I wore a tat libre d'orange, a taquier de soleil, it is a marquee de sard, another marquee de sard. It is very important, James, that you do these chronologically because if it you is. don't, you know, our, our poor listeners will get confused, aren't they? I know, I know. Do you remember when um, you were doing them in reverse? And you did that. And then before that, I wore... <laughs> it's like, what? What the fuck yeah. is he on about? Yeah, two weeks earlier I wore this. No, um, so uh, does anyone know Attaque de Soleil, Marquis de Sade? No, no, but I'm about to spray Ooh. it as you tell us about it. Wow, that's that's quite. Oh, you talk. I, I just want to hear what Fliss has got to say about it. To be honest, I've spoken to Ooh. the perfumer about it. Our friend uh, Quentin Beach at great length, oh, actually. Cuban, he's very helpful. Yeah, he's told me all about it. Um. I dropped well it. Well done. I'm back. Here we go. Uh, <sighs> ooh. 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 Really kind of thick incense. It smells like polished wooden floors and... Elemy and frankincense and another one another smells one. quite churchy. Another, one. another resin, they another mentioned. one. Olibanum. Oh, no. The other one. You tell me. No, you no, say no, it. No. You say it. You say it. Labdanum. <laughs> so. Apparently, according to the perfumer, it doesn't contain very many materials. It contains one material, pretty much. Um, yeah, really? and just obviously stuff to, like, stabilise it and whatever. Um, but it's just labdanum. Um, and... Really? Yeah, and it's spectacular. Wow. I mean, when I first smelled it, I was like, yeah, all it smells of to me is labdanum. However... It, labdanum is so multifaceted that it is a perfume on its own. However, the thing, what I've always said about labdanum as well, is that it's this kind of catalyst sort of material. It's a very much a, a bridging sort of material. It's not something that, for me... But it also smells quite piney and leathery to me. Yep. It's almost like, it smells a bit like, and you know, you're going to laugh at me for this, but it smells like our tack room when I was uh -huh. a little girl. And it smells that leathery, woody, dusty. All those yeah. things. Did you put some, like like treatment on the leather and stuff? Like obviously, yeah, that's yeah, sort of like thing. like yeah, the lots of treatment mm -hmm. on the leather, like sort of saddle soaps, but also like tinctures, quite um, a nasal, yeah, like astringent tinctures. sort of smells. Isn't it quite yeah. common. To Very use astringent in, kind in, of uh, things. Like and now, leather uh, uh, and wood fragrances, uh, not fragrances. Um, like uh, accords, rather. Yeah. Like when you're building a leather accord, like labdanum is one of the kind of key ingredients, mm -hmm. isn't that? Absolutely, yeah, yeah. And uh, that would be one way to describe it because it doesn't smell like leather as such, but it definitely evokes leather. Oh, it has that feel to it. Yeah, it really, it really does. evokes leather, which is you know unusual. But but it's but it but when I say leather, I mean like tough boots, saddle leather. Um, it's not like an, it's not like that soft Hermes no. handbag leather at all. Well, what, what's interesting <clears> about <throat> that that perfume is that the more I was smelling it, because labdanum is by far and away my favourite material, right? I love the smell of like real cistus 
flowers like in the air. I, and I, I just, something about it, it reminds me of my childhood. It reminds me of a very specific friend's house that I used to go around to. I don't know whether they used to burn labdanum in the house or they had loads of sisters in the garden or I don't know what it was, but their house stunk of labdanum constantly like that. And it just, it really reminds me of like a really innocent sort of like time. And, you know, and funnily enough, I got quite a perfume education from that house because the, 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 I think I've mentioned this before, the stepdad, who was a private jet pilot who used to, like, jet people around the fucking world and shit, he had loads of perfumes. He was literally the only person who had a perfume collection. I used to go around there when I was, like, I don't know, fucking seven, six or something, do you know what I mean? Hang around with this lad, and he'd be like, oh, come and look at this, and go in, like, the bathroom, and they'd have, like, a huge array of fragrances, and we just used to try them, and that that was kind of part of the, like, my first, like, oh, wow, you know, being into fragrances. And I think he used to get them because he used to fly all around the world all the time. And it was their house that Stanger labbed in them, weirdly enough. So maybe they were dead into perfumes. I don't know. Um, but anyway, so the thing about this is that I, from smelling it more and more when I first sprayed it and I first heard about it I was like I want that perfume because labdanum is like my favorite thing blah, blah. and then I got it and I started to get this unusual ambrome smell from it right which is quite an animalic weird undertone that labdanum does have but the material ambrome really accentuates it to the point where it's unpleasant to me, right? And it's also, I think it's found in ambergris. So it's got this kind of mm -hmm. animalistic, almost like human-y, it's very strange smell. And I was getting it from this. And I actually asked, uh, it is Quentin Bish who made this, I think. And I said to him, did you use like materials alongside this? And he said, no, it's just that labdanum material. Uh, I didn't, there's no amber really? in it, but I can, I know what you mean because that natural material happens to have, you know, whatever extraction it was or what the, the, wherever it came from, Spain, or I don't know where the, where the labdanum came from. It is Quentin B. Yeah. I just looked it up and it's literally the notes, just yeah. labdanum. So interesting that it's just labdanum because even just on my skin now, I'm getting more pine, but I'm also getting, like you say, something more animalistic yeah. coming out. And it's almost like it's it's gone from almost smelling the middle notes to now I can smell a top note and a bass note and the middle note's mm -hmm. almost gone. And the top note's very, very piney. And then underneath, there's a real musky depth. It's like, I it. hate this, right? But you know, sometimes like modern clothes, like don't dry properly and you get that slightly muggy smell yes. on your clothes of like yeah. water that's not, you know, it's not dried properly. That's exactly yeah. what it smells like. It smells, there's, there's a dampness uh, okay. Dank. But like a, not a damp, <laughs> must, yeah. musty, a mustiness yeah. But I think that's it. kind of what gives it its charm as well, because if it was all sweetness and mm. light and, you know, niceness, it wouldn't work. Well, it's, it's not sweetness no. and light at and all. And I think it? that's why it works as this catalyst material, because it can have all the sweet, heady, top, you know, oh, niceness and sparkliness and similar to olibanum or whatever, and it can have that piney, you know, quality, but it can also have this kind of really strange, unusual, and the ambergris quality probably lends to it being that thing of like a base material that kind of can go in different directions and underpins everything and gives it. So that's why I think labdanum is such an important material. This is a, an, an important perfume for a reference for somebody though. This is probably what some of the best labdanum that you'll ever smell smells like uh and here's the different like you say d d extracting the different you know compartmentalizing the different tiers in your own mind and going okay that's the top of it that's the mid and then this is the base sort of thing fascinating uh fascinating perfume it's moving all the time and I've, i mean I've, I've only had it on a couple of minutes and already i feel like i've been through a number of iterations of sure. fragrance. It, it's a great, it's a great fragrance. It's re so really you know, interesting. I really I might, enjoy it. I might wear it properly tomorrow. It's quite. You can get a hold of it quite cheap yeah. as well. It's one of those ones that yeah. all of a sudden it came out from. Um, Eldo, um, and then it didn't retain its price very well. It just went straight to being reduced. So I don't know whether it was a bit too much for people or people didn't really like it or whatever, but it got heavily reduced very quickly. So it's, you know, it's available for a decent price somewhere. 
Then on Saturday I wore uh, Melagrano. So this was last Saturday, uh, nice. which we all know and love. And Dan's got a little pomegranate that's stinking his house out at the moment, which I love the idea of that. The, uh, I'll send you a little photo of it. It's amazing. Um, it was like uh, 55 pounds or something. And he was like, uh, the Italian guy was like, uh, yeah, you know, this, uh, this it's strong enough to basically centre a bedroom for, you know, a year to 18 months. I was like, what? And he goes, yeah, sure. And then afterwards, move it to a smaller area, like a cupboard or something, and it will keep that f- smelling good for another year. Like, that sounds fucking awesome. For 50 yeah. quid, I'll have one of those. Absolutely. Because if it didn't do that, it would be very disappointing if it just died a death after. Because you often think about that, that how can a product do that uh especially a solid thing but yeah Yeah. that's that that would appeal to me definitely especially with that fragrance because it's just a lovely thing for your house to smell like such a Um, great thing for the house yeah mm, so then i wore valentino uomo the next day Mm. i think we've discussed this before uh yeah spiky kind of s&m looking bottle but actually the least s&m fragrance you could imagine it's a bit is it, it, tiramisu it's very Dior nutty Omi. yeah Dior arm bit of nut in there it's kind of a nutty sort of hazelnutty kind stick of stick the vibes. fucking nut on it it's lovely though it's lovely and it's enough different to Dior arm to warrant its whole existence as another perfume were you going to say something bad then sorry I yeah I, I, I liked it I thought it was nice it reminds me a little bit of um Monsieur Beauregard from uh, Penhaligon's, but mm-hmm. the Penhaligon ones is a little bit sort of sweeter and a little bit richer, maybe. But mm-hmm. um, and the, the Womo ones a little bit more that like, area and a bit lighter. Um, yeah. But in a way, it makes it easier to wear. I, I like that. I, I did end up selling my bottle, but I don't know why because it's it's nice. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, I like that. Yeah, it was one of those ones that I remember at the time when it came out. I was very glad to uh, j- jump on the the thing and say hey this is actually good like because there was loads of people just slagging off perfume at the time when did that even come out i don't know 2012 or some shit um and people were just going no it's shy it's horrible you know perfume's rubbish perfumery's crap and all this and then that came out and they were still on oh it's just dior on but it's like and it's like no it's subtly different from that but it's still good you know what i mean like and especially mm. well maybe compared to now it's you know um having said that sorry to go off piste but um i did try um that new gucci the new gucci for men mm. it's probably not even that new uh, probably came out last year or something but it's like a guilty I want to say intense or something like that. Oh, black bottle. No, it's like a green green bottle. Hmm. Uh, Gucci on something. Does no one know this? If you don't know it, then um, sorry. No. Uh, sorry, I, I let was me find it. Distracted. Gucci, which one? Uh, guilty intense. I want to say. Oh yeah, no, I definitely don't know that. Oh, okay. What? Well, you might be interested in it, weirdly enough, and I will tell you why in a moment. Let me find it. Is it an elixir? Mm. Oh, it might be an elixir. It might be. You're right. Yeah, it bloody is. Oh, is it? Is oh, it a brand new elixir? Elixir de oh, Parfum. The, the new... Yeah. Is this the That's brand it. brand new one? Yeah, Guilty Elixir de Parfum Pour Homme by Gucci. Any good? <sighs> Oddly. I yeah. want to say it's a Quintin Biche as well. It's a fucking Biche. Um, it would be, wouldn't it? Everything that guy's is. like haunting our dreams. What the fuck is this guy doing? He needs it's to come on everywhere. this podcast. He does. Um, right. Okay. So I'll tell you this about it now. It's like the most brutally strong uh, reflection man type fragrance you could imagine. So you go, hmm, okay. Uh, but okay, that is in you know, in a thing with Invasion Bar Bar, one of your favourites, and all that kind of mm. thing. So you think, hmm, yeah, Dan might like it. Couple that with a kind of really slightly annoying modern thing of, like, designer. Do you know what I mean? It's very, very, very tenacious, very tenacious and strong, almost too strong to the point where it's like, nah, it's like sickly, that Coumarin, Fougere over over the top 
it does have a like white floral it says like orange blossom yeah i can get that from it as well but it's just brutal and it's like some people have compared it to Le Mal as well but i'm like it's way more sledgehammer than Le Mal ever was even the original versions of Le Mal mm. so interesting yes has some sort of weird thing to it but it's just too brutal to wear it's just absolutely i've still got it on my jacket like and i can still smell it so strong does he uh, does it have that um sort of signature like a high key vetiver kind of metallic thing that 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 is in basically everything beach has made in the last few years not to me no not really um it's 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 just like like i say it's it's like you know that reflection 45 that we yeah. had it's got that level of intensity but that is like uh, a natural you know uh, material thing compared to this this is like it lists amberfix as one of its like materials and it's like right okay fine but like it's <laughs> It's difficult to describe. I think you need to try it. What I like about it is that it is so... It's a full-on perfume. You, you, it's not fucking around. And you're getting something that I fundamentally like. So I like Reflection Man. I like Lamal. I like the whole concept. I like Invasion Baba. I like the whole concept of that vibe and that uh, Histoire mm. de Parfum one that you were going on about as well before. So it's along the those lines but it's even more brutal and it's got this like modern almost i I don't even know how to describe it it's like that bubblegummy bullshit that they all have but that kind of slightly in the mix right so what they've actually done is taken a tropey kind of boring idea that's been done loads that like lavender fougere thing and then they've just turned it up to 11 and made it like turbo almost like say to the point where it's unpleasant it's so strong and then when it settles down yeah it's much better but it takes hours and it's it's yeah it's absolutely brutal but i kind of weirdly respect it in a way because i'm like this is a designer release and it's like you're getting a lot of bang for your buck right even though it's probably still quite expensive so i recommend trying it because it was memorable and i'm still on the fence as to whether i think it's brilliant or i hate it (laughs) um i i I think that like one spray it'd be like sauvage or something you'd have to like spray maybe one spray and then like walk through it um and then yeah it, it may wear okay and then later on it'd be better than it is to begin with but it sounds like it's in keeping with that line though because the whole gucci guilty line is a little bit like marmite isn't it it's very like um most of them are quite sledgehammery and none of them are really pulling any punches there it's you like it or you don't yeah sort of thing. it's not <laughs> which i respect as well because i think that mm. guilty that really leathery r- ridiculous mm. one that they made um was like genius because that could have that could have really flopped hard and it may well have done i don't know but um i think it's popular with enthusiasts isn't it uh yeah sorry i'm taking fucking ages over this and we've only got through one week so then i wore musk ravageur yeah we all know what that smells like (laughs) do you like musk ravageur anyone Mm, no not really i like it briefly but then it's got a slightly uh slightly like uranus kind of pissy sort of aspect to it yeah, which it i'm not a big fan of yeah i fucking love it <laughs> i fucking love <laughs> yeah. it i i really like it too apparently the, um the i've forgotten who the perfumer was but he took Shalimar as mm. one of his inspirations for that, it actually. and the dry Is down it on? the Shalimar it, dry yeah, down on, i think yeah. It might um, have been. Yeah, I, I, think so. I described it as being like a sort of uh, a, a slightly uh, greasy leather jacketed Lothario um, who'd pissed in his pants. Um, <laughs> I, you know, it's it's sort of superficially sexy, but there is a there is a sort of wet undercarriage there. <laughs> <laughs> so the question there is, how sexy have they got to be for you to sort of it's overlook? Maurice oh, Maurice Roussel. Roussel sorry, yeah. yeah. That was his sort yeah. of masterpiece that he Puncher. took. <laughs> yeah. Punchy Maurice. He does look like he's going to fucking throw a punch. He though. does. Um, well, he... he um, apparently that was his, like, baby that maybe he 
floated it with other brands, and they were like, "No, we're not gonna, we're not gonna fucking put that out." <laughs> Fuck that! It smells like someone's pissed themselves. Yeah, and uh, Frederick Ma was like, mm, "Yeah, come and come and do that over here to me." Um, so yeah, he was happy with that, uh, and I am too. I think it smells of lilies. No one else thinks it smells of lilies. I do. Like kind of v- lilies have this kind of creamy vanillic thing that people don't ever talk about with them but i get the pissy musky sort of thing but i think they really it really smells like lilies to me but anyway Mm. uh then so equipage we were coming back to our equipage now there you go yeah um so i didn't wear this one but i wore my modern bottle and uh i sprayed a bit of this on the other day um when i first got it and i prefer my modern bottle yeah, ah, I do. I think my modern bottle really? is excellent. Yeah, I mean this is very good. Don't get me wrong, and it hasn't it hasn't aged How old is badly. It, I think it's nineteen eighties, possibly. Right. Um, I don't know. Is the I answer. fucking love equipage though. It's oh, great. Such a great, perfume. amazing perfume. Just... Don't get me wrong. This is very good. It's not uh, degraded or horrible. This is not a bad vintage this is a good one it smells good and everything i just think that yeah i don't know maybe i'm maybe i'm wrong i don't know but i think my modern bottle is pretty damn good i don't think you're ever wrong <sighs> yeah. um seldom so yeah. anyway but that's interesting mm. that i've got both and uh i i think i prefer the, the modern when i'm saying modern <laughs> It's probably not that modern. I probably bought it like over ten years ago. But even still, you know, it's it's in a modern bottle. It's n- newer than that one. So anyway, uh, John Vervetos Dark Rebel. Ah. Is that any good? I've yeah, never tried it, it is. but I've seen it a lot. Yeah, it's fucking leathery nice. thing, right? Is it- yeah, kind of, kind of leathery, over the top, uh, like resiny. It's almost like. A bit of a kind of knockabout pound shop. Um, uh, what's that blue Amouage one? It, it, it oh, interlude. Uh, it's kind of a bit of a interlude, knockabout yeah. interlude, bit f- bit of a fruity note in it. Um, it's supposed to be this kind of like badass leather jacket business. The fact that it's even called Dark Rebel, I mean, it's a bit of a lame name, isn't it? But... Uh, I, the thing is, John Vervetos was never in any stores at all. And then all of a sudden that one came out and they stuck up a little boom, John Vervetos thing. And I was like, oh, yeah, okay, I'll try this new one. And I hadn't tried any of them because they were never available to me. Um, and I really liked it. I do really like it. And I still stick to the fact that, you know, I enjoyed wearing it. And I think it's a good it's a good perfume. Uh, then I wore costume. A couple of the... Sorry, go on. Uh, sorry, mate. Uh, a couple of the smells like on Fragrantica mm. are really interesting to me. Yeah. One of which is Fuel for Men. On a car nah, Fuel for Men. I don't get that. <laughs> yeah, and then uh, uh, m- perhaps more upvoted, although with 11 downvotes, is just the DK uh, Donna Karen. Yeah, which is, again, I mean, if other people are saying it, they must be onto something, maybe, but I didn't get that from it at all. I mean, I think it's a I nice perfume. Though. It's give that perfume. one a go at some point. Yeah, yeah. and they—they they look super cool. Those bottles. It is a cool bottle. Yeah, they're really cool bottles. I—I I bought um, that Dark Rebel and uh, is it Artisan Pure when they were really cheap. They came on sale for like twenty quid each or something, hmm. and I, I bought them purely for the bowls. <laughs> Artisan Pure is like just a sort of citrusy. Thing, yeah. Isn't it? yeah, yeah, summer bright, very like. Uh, is that the wicker one? Yeah, has it got like a wicker? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Looks I like that one. wicker. Yeah. yeah, I like I like all yeah. of them actually. Mm. Um, cool. Anyway, so yeah, all sorry. Right. Costume National Arm because you mentioned it the other week, uh, mm. which I don't like as much as I r- thought I did when I first wore it. It's still you know good perfume. It's unique perfume. Um, there's not a lot like that. In fact. Yeah, there's nothing really. Um, I think we talked about a few like fruity Bertrand Duchefort type ones that it may resemble, but mm. now I think they did well to set the stall out with something like say that was quite um, uh, memorable. But yeah, it's okay. Kind of weird fruity perfume. It. Um, then I wore a Gris Cabochard, which. Mm. Mm. Oh yeah, 
Oh, yeah. Which uh, Fliss talked about, oh, and yeah. this was one of the ones in <laughs> Fliss's uh, 200, uh, Les Odes 200. No, it wasn't in my oh, 200 it at all. Was in, I missed it, it out. Yes, sorry. Everybody else Correct. put it in yeah, there. Correct, yeah, I remember. <clears throat> and, yes. And I bought it and went, golly, I've been influenced by our listeners. It's all golly. gone a bit meta. Uh, golly. Well, uh, it's great. Yeah. It's James, it is, is it great. great or is it, it great? It's really great. I feel yeah. like a bit of a broken record saying, there it is, by the way, a uh, very masculine bottle. No, it's actually a lovely bottle. It's, so nice. it's a really nice bottle. Um, and uh, just basically, uh, I'll, I'll say this about it, that it sounds like a broken record because we all tend to kind of gravitate towards these sort of powdery sheep you know things um and yeah that's kind of what it is but it's a very good one i get a lot of ylang ylang in the opening i think it's got this lovely a little sparkle little aldehylic sparkle uh almost remind you of like some really good chanel or something but that's like classy just classy perfume um and then it kind of just retreats into this like really deep um, thing that we all like, like I say, like that kind of powdery sheepra, uh, just loveliness, a little bit mossy, a little bit, you know, a little bit wear, a little bit wear. It feels to me like an easier wear azure, and it's, uh, oh, who's the perfumer? Bernard Chant right. did azure as well, and it feels like it's definitely got that mm-hmm. DNA in it, and I really, I, f- I find it right. quite leathery on me. Um, I really like it. The leather for me is much easier to wear than the azure is it leather. The but eau de parfum it. or the eau de toilette you got? I've got the EDP. Oh, of Cabochard. Uh, yeah. Yeah. I don't know, actually. I think it's the EDP I've got. All right. £17.19. Pence. Yeah, you can't go wrong for that, mate. That's the it's one. like, you got to get it for that. Uh, so anyway, yeah, then the following day, um, this is the penultimate day, just to uh, give you a heads up that <laughs> I will be stopping talking in a minute. Um, I've got this. Which is... Uh, uh, Fliss Santos, will love that's this. That's the Santos Sport, Yes, it? it's, it's Eau de Sport. sport. <laughs> um, it's Santos de Cartier Eau de Sport. It's a plastic bottle. But these vintage their take on sport is nothing like the sort of no. contemporary uh, blue, blue bullshit nonsense. i mean it's always just the original you know with a slightly fresher aspect to it rather than uh yeah well is it yeah oh no there's no fresher no no fresher <laughs> no. aspect just <laughs> really? no Not i know even. what you mean there normally is that's the whole make it a bit sporty with a the sort of fresh note. This to me uh, doesn't smell particularly. It has it has a certain signature of the original Santos, which is that coconutty, uh, slightly creamy coconutty woods um, that the original has, and it definitely captures that. Um, but uh, in a in a slightly different format. That's all. So. Um, uh, um, so yeah anyway uh so yeah it's very good um and yeah it's in a plastic bottle so you can take it to the gym um yeah. <laughs> even though it's from the 1980s or something is it i don't know 90s something uh, something like yeah. That, yeah and then i'm wearing over the musk today because i've got this nice fetching uh cricket look going on and just thought i'd have a nice yeah. creamy woody skin musky scent it's beautiful that's it uh, cool. Right. I also got this oh, as well. Fine. Sorry. <laughs> no. I also oh got God. this oh, from, the, from the listener um, suggestions. Oh, which yup is yup? yup which yup is that? Le bain. Yup le bain. Yeah. And? I think you'd hate it, Dan, to be honest. Uh, right. It's a kind yup. of... It's a kind of... I don't know, like resinous vanilla, uh, m- musk, like bath scent. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, it's kind of very, 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 very cosy, which I know you fucking hate. Um, the, even the word, yeah. even the word makes me like 
nauseous. Yeah, so I, I doubt it's you'd so like cozy. it, but I do. We should we should have a cozy night in. No, you should fuck off and die. Don't <laughs> ah, don't fucking use cozy. So mean. Cozy, mm. it's so cozy and lovely. It's cozy. Anyway, I feel like I'm losing my mind, um, which may or may not be apparent mm. to uh, our dear listener. Um, I know. You've still got is, another half yeah, to fuck. get through, darling. Don't use it let. Fuck me. Okay, well, you know, uh, let's... Uh, <laughs> I'm just wondering if anyone's actually listening to this thinking, does this cunt actually want to be doing it? Yes, I do want to be doing it. I'm just tired. Well, you've already all. given it away um, that you're 2000s. You weren't doing any drugs or anything. It's just like... It's like fucking, boring, isn't it? Yeah, Adrian Mole fucking cappuccino years. <laughs> you motherfucker. Yeah. It's like, you know... Yeah, yeah, basically. Yeah. Basically, it was... Uh, uh, yeah, it was basically well after the whole Pandora thing. Yeah. Um, so, okay, good, fine. Let's fucking wrap part one, uh, which actually isn't as long as uh, I, I thought it, it might be, but uh, there you go. Um, so, good. Um, do we have any news? Was there... We're not judging by oh, length no, now, no, are no. we? There was some news. There was some fucking news. How did we miss this news? He is back. <laughs> ah. who, who is back, Dan? Who? Luca Turin is back with his same brand of fucking stupid fucking bullshit. Um, everyone he's thinks he's amazing. I've, I've subscribed. I've subscribed to his sub, Substack, have. and I'm really I enjoying it. Are. I'm really. He's just funny. Yes. I just, he's just. He just writes well. He writes well. well but he just he writes just, well. Seems to be a bit of a and he's funny. When it comes to perfume. Uh, you know, perhaps he'd be better off <laughs> writing about something else. Um, anyway, so that's the exciting news. Luca Turin having flounced away from perfume. I'm going. Is a flounce. I'm back. going. All these fucking internet twats. They won't read my book anymore, Flounce. Um, and uh, off he fucked, uh, and now he's flounced back in. Um, Realise he's got some bills to pay. Yeah, yeah. Can you monetize Substack? I don't even know how Substack works. Yes, you can. Okay. Well, I wonder how long it'll be before that shit happens. Um, no, welcome back, Luca Trin. Well, he has, he has. So I've, 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 I've subscribed for free, which means I get to read some, but not all of the articles. And then there's a... There is a what's the word? A tier yeah. situation. A tier where the more you pay, the more you can read. <laughs> the more you, the so, more you pay, the so, more you can read. So basically, the less you pay, the less you can read, uh, which actually suits me rather well. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. Sorry, I don't sound all that uh, uh, psyched about Luca Turin being back. I mean, James, he's a fucking you... bell piece. <laughs> <laughs> well. <laughs> Well, I mean, why don't you tell us how you really feel, Ben? I, I do think it's interesting. I did put on my Insta a little while ago, a couple of days ago, about having a look at him being back and then looking at his one and two star perfumes. And I pulled out some of his one and two star oh, perfumes out of my collection. God. And they're all some of my favourites. Yeah. And people were like, yeah, let's go. Let's do it. Let's review his. So there is, there, there's, there's um, appetite for yes. us to talk yes, about yes. his one I and two star stuff. I really um, couldn't. Like, um, I know. I, 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 mean, I mean, I like, like I say, uh, I like his Yeah, writing. Fahrenheit. Yeah. It's like a two-star... But if you read his review, like, and I think this is the danger of, like, certainly getting an unofficial list of someone else just going, oh, these are the ones he didn't like in his book. They're probably accurate, but they don't give any context as to why he might have done that. And I think when I read why? the Fahrenheit yeah. one, he was yeah. very much going, oh, this is a shitty, like, new reformulated version. He wasn't going, oh, I don't yeah. like the original. Like, and he didn't... He, his, his ratings obviously don't give um, cultural importance or ref, you know, like how, any any kind of other factors aren't really factored in. I, I mean, his own bias will be, um, but they are very much from his perspective and that's all he can do. And fair enough to him. Do you know what I mean? Like I... I, I genuinely think some of his writing is it's it's snappy, it's concise, it's kind of funny. Uh, he does, you know, it, it, it's it's not it's not like overly like pretentious or anything. Um, 
Yeah, it's just, it's his, just taste his taste in a, in a lot of like ways, and uh, fair enough. And if that is the case, but I just... We're foreshadowing. Yeah, We're I find some of it slightly inconsistent, yeah. and some of the ways he talks about like materials and things, you expect him to kind of expand and be like, oh, well, this is why, but I don't think he really knows. He just talks about, you know, like, bo- like bonds and stuff, and you're like... How are you, you know, you're talking about like the chemistry of this here, but it has no relevance to your taste or what people particularly like. And you could, you could extrapolate that out into all perfume and say, well, what does any of it matter? But it it kind of, it throws a bit of a red herring in there that he knows Mm. more than he does or that he has some kind of insight into like how to make perfume and stuff when he, I don't think he does. Um, And, and, and that is, that is one of my pet hates, Um, you know, both, professionally and personally is sort of people uh presenting with kind of more as though they are more knowledgeable on a subject than they really are i don't understand why people do that i mean i've you know i I suppose i'll leave myself open for some fucking accusation of hypocrisy there or something given that i spend a lot of time reviewing perfumes on uh uh instagram but i tend to just describe how i smell things and and what things smell Mm -hmm. like to me i'll stay in my lane you know i'm not gonna fucking talk about uh stuff that i don't really understand in order to somehow sound intellectually more fucking impressive yeah um yeah i I, it it bothers me when people do that because i think it undermines everything else you know once you sort of detect the bullshit you know out the top You know, maybe it's only 3% of what they're saying is bullshit, but as soon as you can see it, it it's like it taints everything else that they have to True. say. I, I, I know where you're coming from. It doesn't it doesn't annoy me as much as just slightly confuses me as to why that's in there if it doesn't then expand out. Because sometimes some people say things that are really, really profound and they, they, they're they even coming from a point of view of they might have just knocked around with some materials themselves, but they might have found something out mm. and they put it in a thing and you go, oh yeah, that's really you know insightful. Like there's plenty of people that I can think of. Um, anyway, so. so. <laughs> uh, good. Well, yeah. I mean, there's all sorts of bits of information, um, you know, that, that I, I guess I like to present like a little snippet of information in most of my reviews, mm. such as um, this bottle is only 80% filled. Um, it says so. <laughs> it says so on the bottom. Uh, okay, look, fuck it. That's been enough for part one. Um, it's been a riot. We'll be back in part two in just a few minutes where we will be talking about perfumes of the 2000s, a very important era for Fliss. Probably not so much for me. Anyway, we'll be back in a couple of minutes. Uh, Stick with us. (laughs) (laughs) Smacked off her fucking head. Separated her fucking mind and her body for that whole ten years, by the sounds of it. (laughs) Oh, Jesus Christ. I can see this is going to be a good part two. Catch you in a minute. Hello and welcome back to part two of Les Odorants. Uh, this week we are talking about the noughties. Um, literally the period at the start of the... What century is it? It's 21st? The 21st century. Is that right? I think it must have been. Or is it the 22nd? 21st. 21st. I don't know. The millennium. Oh, fuck it. Starting year 2000. Starting the year 2000. For about 10 years. Well, for exactly 10 years, if you want to count a decade. Um, this is going well. Uh, we should do this How more How long's a decade, Dan? No, it's about <laughs> 10 years. It's about 10 years. <laughs> <laughs> it's 80% <laughs> 10 of... Uh... <laughs> it's, like 80%, it's 80% of 10 years. Because they do it with the machine, you know. So... Um, <laughs> Uh, I've lost my train of thought already. Um, yeah, okay. So I want to know a bit about what you were up to in the noughties and what perfumes you were wearing and, and all that stuff. And and uh, I guess just to get things going for me, um, you know, I met my uh, I met my wife. Uh, um, it must have been nineteen ninety nine, just towards the end of nineteen ninety nine. Um, but we sort of started seeing each other more seriously uh, early. Uh, January 2000, uh, January, February 2000, something like that. Um, and uh, so that marked, I guess, uh, a very pronounced uh, settling down, uh, by and large. Uh, uh, so less, fewer, f- 
always get confused between less and fewer. Fewer parties uh, and uh, less uh, general chaos uh, in my life. And, um, uh, you know, so I, I guess a, a sort of uh, a period of settling down, which for everyone will be truly boring, I'm sure. So, uh, uh, you know, far less of the uh, drug taking and the uh, uh, raving and far more of the going to work and, um, you know, uh, cosy nights in. Um, and the perfumes I was wearing, uh, that I remember standing out were, um, certainly at, at, at the start of the 2000s, I was wearing Amen a lot. Um, I mean, I guess everyone was. I checked, I think Amen came out in 98, um, but I was wearing that a lot through through the early uh, thousands. Uh, and then uh, Ted Hermes uh, came out in 2006, yeah. and that was, uh, that was... <laughs> What's that noise? Ben, you just go. Eh, uh, it's eh, just classic, isn't it? Eh, eh, yeah, I think that's probably going to feature on everyone's list, isn't it? It's uh, uh, probably not Fliss's, I'd wager, but mm. um, but I, uh, uh, you know, I wore a lot of that. I've got a funny story about that actually. Oh yeah, go on. Well, not really funny, but we'll come to it. But okay, all right. Well, we'll get to it when we get to it. But um, uh, you know, Fliss. Um, uh, I think you mentioned you were no longer Hermione Granger and more fucking uh, Amy Winehouse by this point. So, uh... well, I mean, ha. <laughs> so basically, yeah. So this was a period of time where I, I obviously just left university, and a lot of things had changed and moved in my life, and I. I, I definitely, you were settling down and I was doing the opposite. And for the first time I was, I was in, living in London. Um, I'd, I had worked f- for a very large uh, merchant bank for a couple of years while I was beginning to write a PhD that never happened. And then by about 2002, everything changed. And I decided I was going to be, uh, I was going to follow in my father's footsteps and be an actor. And it, that it just everything just hit a really good time girl thing for me I think and I made up for all the parties that I didn't go to during my A levels and during during university and I was the opposite of settling Whatever down. Whatever made you decide that you didn't want to work for a merchant bank anymore? Mm. Like, was it? Oh, you, <laughs> oh, this is, you've had this um, I'm not going. Well, to I mean, so basically. <laughs> Well, basically, what, basically, what happened with that was, is I'd um, my undergraduate thesis had uh, got published in American Anthropologist, and I'd been offered a PhD. And in order to fund my work in the PhD and to fund my living, I'd started as a temp at a bank, and the bank very quickly said, "Ah, oh, you shouldn't be a temp." come on our analyst fast track and I said I can't I'm doing this I'm doing some academic work and they said well we'll give you a day release uh twice two days a week so I was working for a a bank for three days a week and then doing my PhD for two days a week um and then my professor left to follow the love of her life to Canada and so I lost my professor and just my funding fell through and I was very quickly left working at a bank that I didn't really want to work at because it was an accident that I was there anyway and my PhD had fallen through and I was just like what am I going to do and I just like stop being Hermione Granger what have you always wanted to be to do which was be on stage and piss about dancing and singing and doing Shakespeare and telling stories and so I started to do that and by doing that I came in to contact with a large community of bohemians who were you know there was a lot of parties after the shows in the evening and <coughs> it was lovely it was it was fantastic i wouldn't swap it for the world but i was i was absolutely off my fucking tits only just understand well yeah, i was only just beginning to to do it. i mean I, I was so sober during university i was so sober during my school years that i think that it would be ridiculous to say that I didn't go a bit far sometimes. Did you overcompensate <laughs> for uh, coming to it all late? Um, 
I, d- I don't know if I overcompensated, but I certainly threw, I certainly jumped in with both feet. Good, Shall good we just for say you. that? Good for you. <laughs> so when you were uh, off your head on Ket or whatever other uh, <laughs> dubious fucking choice in narcotics, um, what what yeah. were you um, what were you smelling of? Well, it's kind of. Well, there was two different situations, really. So I was, there was part of me that was still had, like, my finances were very tight for a lot of the time because you don't make a lot of money once you've decided to be a professional actor. Mm. Uh, and what do, and what money, any money you, you do, do make, make, you've spunk up the wall on fucking Class A narcotics, so... Well, I don't know about Class A narcotics. I used to just sniff everyone else's. I think I spent a lot of money on wine, okay. if I'm honest. Were you um, basically with now? I w- <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Rubbing deep people <laughs> over yourself. You drinking the um, fucking lighter fluid. <laughs> <laughs> oh, GBL, not lighter yeah. fluid. You've you, you got to take it. <laughs> anyway, we won't go into that. Um, I think I, for a long, for the, for the early part of the 2000s, I was definitely still in my designer period. Mm. So there was a, a long time when I was wearing things like. Um, Michael by Michael Kors, which was like this big tuberosey white flower thing, which I think started me on my whole white flower trip. I was wearing um, YSL New, um, which is like a very fuzzy incense. Um, There was a lot of soft things that I was wearing. I think I was wearing a lot of sensual fragrances. Um, So uh, YSL New... Crystal Noir by Versace, um, Dior Addict as well. Those were all my early 2000s things. And then by about 2005, I I say fell into, but I met a group of people who were doing a, a lot of specific type of theatre that I really enjoyed. And I, began, and I joined their theatre company. And through that, I met a guy called Andrew who became my almost like my fragrance guru he ended up being one of my very best friends unfortunately he died um, uh, 2 you've years ago about Andrew but before yeah yeah and so from about 2005 onwards he we would go to his house and he would cook these amazing dinners and then after dinner he would just bring out all these perfumes and all these samples and we would literally we'd we'd be playing parlor games or party games or talking or whatever, there'd always be this big sample jar of perfumes, as well as other things, <laughs> in the room. Um, but that's where I started to learn about Goutal, about early L'Artisans, about Serge Luton. And th- I think that's where my niche understanding really changed, was mid-2000s. Oh. Um, and I, I, I think a lot of my collection now is still based on those a lot of those early smells those first time you smell something that really hits your gut and changes you you almost can't not have it in your collection anymore because it's it was so magical mm. so even some of the the early gutals or the early artisans i don't necessarily wear anymore i still have i still have small bottles of or small partials of because i just can't bear not to be able to smell mm. them you know <clears throat> nice yeah. nice Nice, yeah. nice, nice. Okay, mm-hmm. uh, James, what were you wearing in the thousands? Yeah, I had to think about it. Um, I think... Were you off your head on Ket as well? <laughs> pretty much. <laughs> um, I think from, like... Yeah, yeah. I, I was. Uh, among, yeah, amongst, amongst other things. I think um, from about, like, maybe 2000 to, like, 2005... Uh, we can write off. I, I don't know what I was doing. Um, <laughs> no, um, I, I think fragrance wise, all because when you obviously brought this up, I was like, that's a really good, that's a really important like decade. But unfortunately, like my usual thing, dog at my fucking homework. I haven't looked into it. I'm trying to look now desperately on, <laughs> on fucking thingy. Go, what that's did so I, what was I wearing? I kind of wearing the same shit. So like a hangover from the 90s, I was still wearing some of that 90s shit, right? But stuff like M7 came out, didn't it? Um, mm, and yeah. things yeah. that were like quite cool. sort of seismic kind of shift and not to mention I, I mean i was wearing boring shit like mont blanc individuel horrible perfume but i was wearing it mm-hmm. um no I, and, and basically like things like exactly like um fliss was saying that was kind of my uh, awakening to um 
uh, niche stuff. Do you know what I mean? Like, the, and there wasn't a great deal of kind of resources to find things out like there is nowadays. Um, mm. And yeah, so it was Lartisan. It was um, uh, what's that? Mona, Mona Dioria. Um, uh, what else was there? Like, yeah, um, Serge Luton's. But all those kind of ones that were in the sort of department stores that you didn't really get to go to very often because that was when I would actually venture to London sometimes. Mm. Um, and, yeah, just sort of sort of go around and try stuff like that. Um, and then just the usual staples, really, for me, that were around. Um, and I try and think about, like, things that I really liked. Like, immediately when you said that, I thought of, like... Yeah, I mean, no, that wasn't even... No. See, I get the wrong... I, I keep thinking 90s... Um, just, just give me well, a, a lot of stuff that came out in the nineties was still wearing. Um, so, to, this is a question that I've, I've sort of wanted to ask, and I feel like I'm probably directing this one at you, James, while while you're, you're up mm-hmm. anyway, because yeah. I, I feel like you've probably got a view on it. Um, so, one of the things that that was feature for me through the two thousands was that. I didn't really know about any of the niche perfumery. Mm-hmm. I only sort of came to, I guess, understand niche perfumery very, very, well, arguably quite recently, uh, last five, ten years. Yeah. Um, and my question is this. Was was the 2000s really the point at which niche perfumery and designer perfumery sort of became distinct threads, if you like, of 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 sort of uh perfumery because i i mean i think about you know obviously uh in the 90s stuff like balenciaga uh whatever yeah. i mean these days i arguably you might throw that into a sort of a niche um category but there was no real distinction back then there didn't seem to be a distinction between when i look at all the perfumes i've got there's no real distinction between niche and, and designer with the exception possibly of Guerlain I think yeah I'd say yeah I mean I, I remember going into like department stores and there's, there would be the big concessions like Givenchy mm. and YSL and all that stuff but then particularly on Oxford Street there would always those those like House of Fraser or whatever there would be an extra little room, and in that room there would be L'Artisan de Perfumeur, Atat Libre d'Orange, the Gutals, Serge Luton, and there was definitely, I think, a, a change then. And these were quite new at the time, and it was exciting in a different way, but they weren't attached to those big fashion houses. They were just fragrance houses on their own in a different way to something like Floris. Yeah, it's it's different. I think the even just for you to ask that question it m- means that we're like you know um uh, kind of post 2010s really because I think that was the main time when it really started to even talk about like niche and do you know what I mean? It wasn't even really I don't even think it was really uh, like that, that coined even that that term. Do you know what I mean? I was going to say we don't. No. I don't remember using the word niche. I remember thinking of yeah, them it was as just shit that exclusive you couldn't find perfume. Unless you really look for it, just that shit that you couldn't yeah. find elsewhere yeah. unless you were you in London, like basically. Anyway. You could find it, no. No. and you couldn't afford it. Yeah. Oh, well, that that was another feature of the two thousands for me was not having fucking money. Mm. Uh, you know, I, I, there's, mm. I did not have money to fucking spend a lot on anything, let alone f- fritter away on perfume. So, um, so I guess that was always going to be a bit of a constraint. Um, so, I, I mean, I, I was just having a look at uh, a couple of seminal things. I don't, did I ever mention? Uh, I, I must have mentioned, but I, my uh, uh, my flatmate Dom and his uh, yeah. uh, obsession with uh, Dolce and Gabbana. Um, is it the poor mm-hmm. Om? Yeah. yeah. Uh, well, that 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 was one that obviously scented uh, the early two thousands for me as well. Um, Definitely before I moved out that, again. Yeah. Before I moved out and and in with my to then be a wife i mean, my 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 first kid was born in 2007 so yeah it was uh oh wow 
Wow. Yeah, I was going through a bit of a, I guess, a slightly different uh, track to, to some of you guys. Because, I mean, you, uh, you, Ben, you don't have kids, I don't think, and, and Fliss and James both have little, little mm-hmm. children. Kids. Yeah. yeah. I've got fucking horrible teenagers. Yeah, Nancy. not for me. Not for me. Um, not for me. Yeah. Not for me, mate. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No. Bonsai the fuckers. Keep them in a little jar and then they can't get Funnily any enough, uh, it's funny you should mention that because it's nothing to do with what we're talking about, but I'm going to fucking say it anyway because we're doing little anecdotes about why life. Not? So why not? For some reason, right, either Google's like listening to me or some kind of shit, um, but I've been getting loads of videos and like, you know, um, Instagram things for terrariums. Right. Um, What's a exactly? Terrarium? What is a terrarium? I wouldn't have fucking. So you keep like turtles and shit in frogs. No, they're beautiful, self-contained glass, um, kind of mm-hmm. like vats or jars that you put a lid on and you put the plants in, and it creates its own ecosystem. So once you've sealed it, everything continues to grow because the amount of moisture in there and the way that the plants um, expire and or respire means that they it's 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 a self of course sustaining that. ecosystem oh, <laughs> brilliant mind, brilliant description so br- lovely description <laughs> and exactly that is exactly it and what's amazing about that there's some guy the oldest one in the world was sealed right a sealed bottle uh, he sealed it in 1972 or something like that, right? So it's over 50 years old. And still still creating still, its own Still going, life. right? <laughs> Amazing. He just got some, like, fern sprigs. Wow. Do not open that. There's there's blatantly some fucking, like, highly mutated, evolved... The thing is going to come yeah. in. <laughs> Fuck that. It, like, <laughs> black hole kind of Well, the weirdest, the weirdest thing about it is there's this guy, and obviously I don't, like, follow him or anything, but he was throwing his videos at me, and he's some, like, British guy, and he, he almost does, like, AMSR type shit. Like, he kind of whispers, which I don't normally like, but he's like, Ooh, so oh, I hate I'm, that. I'm making a terrarium from uh, this discarded whatever, and he'll just get this little container, and then he starts... Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. he starts, Don't do that. He starts no, like putting no, stuff in awful. it, and then he'll put like half of a goat's fucking jawbone and stuff. You know, he just puts interesting like. What? Well, no, it's almost like taxidermy. It's like interesting little tidbits of things and stuff, and they puts things in, and then they put like a fern sprig, and he'll put a load of like soil material in there, and then all these little fucking organisms, like tiny little things. Do you? Yeah. Well, I there you go. And I thought, wow, that's Instagram wonderful. And Jenny was like, don't get into that. You'll get fucking well into it and we'll have soil and shit all around the house. You'll have all these bottles everywhere. I'm like, uh, I'm going to get into I it. I love the impression you do of your wife, by the way. <laughs> yeah, it goes well deeper than Mike. Well, you're not fucking matter of you, fuck, you know. Yeah, fucking rich. Um, anyway. You know. so, so, when, wait, wait, when is the wedding day yeah. again? Uh, Where's yeah. it been set? Whatever she says, I think. <laughs> and that's it. No terrariums for me. So, 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 um, <laughs> no terrarium, no terrariums for you. But the super scene. No terrarium for you. Um, why? Why are you being pushed terrariums or terraria? I don't know. No idea. But I, it, it is up my okay. street. Don't get me wrong. The fucking Google this, knows it's shit because I'm like, this is fascinating. I'm really into this. Um, <laughs> this is this is a bit yeah, of me. Yeah. Um, right. Okay. Is there any way to relate that okay. anecdote Let's back try. to perfume uh, at all? <laughs> segue this motherfucker. Yeah, because... Um, if you opened the terrarium, it might smell like Secretions Magnifique, which was released oh, in 2006. Good one. Good one. Well done. Uh, it would probably fucking stink. Oh, well done. It, it, it probably would stink. <laughs> um, I'll give it that. Um, is there... I, I quite. It sort of sounds like... Um, uh, a bit of a time capsule kind of thing, except it's it's a living Correct. time capsule that will yeah. evolve. Um, what would you put in your early 2000s time capsule? Yeah, there has to be at least one perfume. But, <laughs> I mean, uh, and, and, and I know Fliss is probably going to put a bag of ket in there. But, um, no! <laughs> no! Yeah. This, is, this ket thing's getting out of hand. I wasn't that bad. You had your own little spoon that you kept in your wallet. 
Come on. No. Um, no. Pets, <laughs> what, what, Ben? Ben, what would you have put in the two thousands? What would you have put in your little uh, time capsule? Anxiety medication. Oh, okay. Yeah, lots of it. 100%. 100%, yeah. Um, wow. Well, I mean, perfume-wise, though, are we talking? Yeah, I mean, we should probably no, just, keep it loosely life. related to perfume. It's a perfume podcast. I, I'm not sure if you know that, but, um, yeah, it is a perfume podcast. So uh, the problem apparently. with my 2010s is that... No, 2000s. 2000s, rather. 2000s? <laughs> is that... Um, sure, it was a messy period. Um, um, is that... There are, are definitely perfumes that are probably more interesting, but th- there is one perfume that stands out as being important in terms of my perfume interest, and it's Terre yeah. d'Hermes. Because I, I was really into, like like James said, but like, there was a hangover of... I wore a lot of Lodissi still. Um, poor Homme and oh, Poor yeah. Femme. I wore both of them. Um, and funny enough, I, I smelt the Poor Femme version. I, I got a free bottle. And when I say a free bottle, I moved into this student house and it was someone just left it in the bathroom. So I was like, I'm having that. And I fucking loved it. Um, but yeah. Um, and also, uh, what's the other one I used to wear a lot of in the early 2000s was Comme de Garçon 2. Um, mm-hmm. the Comme de Garçon Homme, I think it was. Homme mm-hmm. 2. Uh, it was like a silver bottle with the just a 2 yeah. written on it. Oh, and, um, yeah. Yeah, like you used to wear a lot of that uh, early two thousands. Those Comme de Garcon stuff was were really cool at the time, that, and that's why. And funny enough, I remember it standing out on the shelf yeah. in Debenhams, just like sticking out a mile. Like this looks super cool. Like the off kind of like asymmetric bottle that was all yeah. off center, and I was like, that looks fucking wicked. What's that? And uh, yeah, I remember, so I wore a lot of that. Um, but it, it was Terre d'Hermes, right? And this is my sort of anecdote, right? So my two thousands, I was in my so I was born in 81. So the 2000s for me were my 20s. And I mean, they were a fucking head fuck. I mean, I was, I, I moved to London, then I moved back to Brighton and I was DJing all around Brighton like three nights a week. And the, the, the other nights I was on the beach just getting fucking shit faced. <laughs> um, oh yeah, I mean, it was a mess. Um, and a, a lot of anxiety and horror and, you know, drug induced nightmare it was horrible my 20s were horrible when i turned 30 i was it was just such a relief um but it was a great time as well and i wouldn't trade any of it but um (laughs) sounds great oh yes perfume perfume yes so um, hang on why am i telling you about what a fucking mess i was (laughs) ben just to recenter you this is a perfume podcast we're talking about the 2000s go yes so so Terre d'Hermes, right? So I went to Debenhams and um, I so I was wearing a lot of like Lodice and uh, uh, CDG2. And around about that time, there was a lot of like, I guess, you know, um, Oriental stuff got big again, didn't it? Like um, mm-hmm. spicy, sweet men's perfumes. Like uh, and I, one that sticks out a mile was uh, Sexy Man, to Carolina Herrera mm. 212, Sexy Man. <gasps> Turin loves that. Oh, hideous too, too awful. Does it? Oh, he's cool. No, he <laughs> fucking hates it. It's like and a one star. You, Dan, oh, okay, good. fucking haunted me with this perfume, right? I hate <laughs> oh, it so hang on. much. Did I send you a bottle of it? You fucking sent me a bottle and said that I won a Rauk, right? But I don't even remember entering yeah. it because I ne- I very rarely enter those Rauks or whatever you Random say. Random act of because kindness. Because I always feel... Like, That's what it sounds Yeah, I always for. feel like I can't do that. Because I'm just too, like that's just punished to enter, so I don't enter. And you sent me a bottle, and I was like, "Why did you send me this?" And you sent me a message saying, "Oh, you won this route. And I was like, "I swear you're just doing this. Is just <laughs> like trolling, yeah, trolling me. Yeah, is someone just trolling <laughs> me. Like, um, because the other one as well was would have been, of course, Paco Rabanne one million as well, right? And 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 so anyway, there was a lot of this sort of stuff, and I, I owned both of those perfumes. I fucking hated them, even though I owned them. Um. And then I bought, te- right, so I went to Debenhams and I had a job interview. Um, and I, I didn't have many jobs um, in my 20s. In fact, I had one and I got sacked and it was the last job I ever had. Um, <laughs> Why so, did you get sacked, I went. Ben? Oh, I was late three times in oh. a row. <laughs> they, they basically said three strikes and you're out. And I said, cheers, see you later. <laughs> and uh, that was the end of that. Um, uh so um, I, I basically I went to Debenhams anyway and I said I need a perfume that smells a bit more mature 
and they were like, well, we've got just the thing for you. Just came out, tear their mares. And I was like, go on then. I don't know what this is. And, and uh, I smelt it and I just instantly was like, this is fucking brilliant. And I, it's pretty much all I wore for the rest of the 2000s mm. until I start. basically I started smelling it. And it, for about the first year or so, I just loved it. And that was it. I didn't really question it. It was just fucking brilliant. And it made me feel like, oh, I'm in my mid-twenties now. You know, like I'm wearing mm-hmm. perfume for grown-ups. <laughs> and, and, and then I started thinking, what is it I like about this? So then I started looking into it. And, it, and I would say it was probably the perfume that then turned me on to actually getting into perfumes because I, I realised it was the vetiver that I liked. So that got me on to uh, Timbuktu by Lardson Parfumer and Vetiver ah. Oriental by Serge Luton. And that was like, that was it then. I smell. I remember smelling vetiver and towel and just thinking, like, what in the fuck is this? <laughs> like, you know, I knew I liked vetiver and I could mm-hmm. smell that this was vetiver and it smelled the same as Terre de Mans. It had that vetiver, but but it was so much fucking, it was like, this is fucking weird. You know, it smells like chocolate and shit and dirt and mud. And I like, love oh, it. Fuck. <laughs> I loved it. And it was just brilliant. And that was, that was for me, like, that, I guess, the turning point. But it's interesting because I, I didn't really differentiate it as being niche because, again, like at the time, like everyone else, like, you know, in, the tw- in their 20s with like having a smash up of a time, I had no money. I was flyering for money, mm. like, you know, standing yeah. on street corner, handing out flyers for indie clubs. Mm. And that was, uh, you know, so I didn't have any money to buy this shit. So for me, it wasn't really like niche and designer. It was just like these unaffordable bottles that I just sort of... Yeah went into and sniffed every now and then and went, yeah, that's nice. Yeah. <laughs> well, I like that. I have a bit of that, yeah. <laughs> nice. Yeah. It's funny you should talk about Timbuktu because I remember the first time I smelt that and I was just like, this is so opposite to anything mm. like in that designer section of the of boots or yeah. wherever. Yeah. I'm just thinking this is... I, I like this brand. I need all of this brand. And obviously I, c- I couldn't afford any of it, but just feeling like this is, I've come home. I've yeah. come home. And, and, and I mean, I wasn't even like, say like, I mean, at that time I was wearing like, like low DC pour femme and like Comme de Garçon too, which I wouldn't say are like super normal perfumes. And even no. Terre de Mez at the time was pretty like different yeah. to what was out there. But I remember that Vetiver Oriental and, and Timbuktu were just on another level. It was just like, I don't, even under, like what even is this like you know is this meant to smell nice i don't what like, it was just it was just it just for me it just opened my eyes that like perfume was like more than just like smelling attractive or or you know covering up mm. last night's shame it was yeah. you know it was it was actually a, like an artistic kind of endeavor <laughs> Totally. And that the idea of those kind of like the stories that used to come out with the Lartisans for things yeah. like Traverse Le Bosphore and stuff. I remember, again, being at my friend Andrew's house and him saying, oh, you need to smell this, Fliss. And he sprayed a tester of Traverse Le Bosphore. Uh, Le, Le Bosphore, he said it's meant to smell of the Bosphorus and going across the Bos- Bosphorus in Turkey and it's got um, the apple shisha in it and it's got um, the the Turkish delight sugar in it and and, and it, just the way it was described on the back of the card and then smelling it, I just remember thinking, oh my God, this is, this is a world that I mm. hadn't previously understood existed. It was so far away from you know, that kind of Dior addict, this smells like, and I'm, I, mean, I still think Dior addict smells great, but that, mm. you know, that glossy magazine picture of, you know, which told a story, but it wasn't romanticised and the literature of it wasn't there. Whereas with something like the L'Artisans or even the Serge Luton, there was this huge amount of literature that, that came with the smell. So it wasn't just the smell, there was the literature with it as well. And you were just mm. like, wow, it's, it feasted my soul in a different way and I was like I need I need this I need this <laughs> I think there was like there's like been a, like a few sort of profound moments it, it, like it, it, that, that where I had those kind of like moments where you sort of really like, opened your eyes and one of them was like in the late 90s and I went to a music festival and I just remember standing there on the Sunday when everyone was like it was all over and there was shit all over the floor and loads of people going home and I remember just standing there and just thinking like it's the first music festival I've ever gone to and I just I remember thinking like this can be more than just music like this is a lifestyle mm-hmm. like 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 because like, up until then you know i'd always been like, i'd loved music my whole life but it was just mm-hmm. what i listened to and but it really like i was like 16 and it like in this music festival and i just realized like shit there's more to it like it's 
It can be a life. Like, and, 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 and the same sort of thing with the Vet for Oriental and Timbuktu at the same time, just thinking like, shit, this is more than this. Yeah. Like, this is like a whole different thing. Like, because I, I say, like, all through the 90s, I, I love perfume. And all through the early 2000s, I always gravitated towards it. And, and, and scent in general it's been something you know I always judge things by scent like new things I, I, I smell everything yeah and so like scent's always been really important but it wasn't until I saw those perfumes that like it's, it's and specifically Serge Luton because after I smelled vetiver and Tau that I then sort of thought I got well I need to smell everything yeah. else um and I remember just like just trawling through those Serge Luton fragrances and just thinking like this is just so fucking different to what I've known up until this point. Um, and, you know, when you're like 25, you think you know everything mm. in the whole world, right? So, so to realise that you don't is quite a shocking and, thing. And it, it, was, it, was, it was more than smelling glamorous or, like you say, smelling nice. This wasn't, this absolutely it wasn't. It had nothing to do with absolutely that. absolutely nothing yeah. to do with smelling nice or smelling glamorous or, or attracting someone or, you know, like going to a club and, and a guy going, oh, you smell nice. Has nothing to do with that. This suddenly became, for me, about wearing a story or wearing something to take me somewhere else. I don't really care anymore if somebody likes what I smell like mm. anymore. This is mm. absolutely, totally about how I feel and how I am having a relationship with the smell or the scent that I'm wearing and how it changes my day, dramatically changes my day and my mood. Um, and it was the first time that that, I, I grasp that absolutely. Yeah, and when you contrast like those perfumes with what was popular at the time, especially I'm not sure so much about the, the female side of stuff, but the the, the ma masculine side of things was this quite like I say sweet, spicy Orientals mm -hmm. and stuff, and and like mm -hmm. Amen and stuff like that. Like it was just it was just so different. It was just like they like say like like for example, two sexy men, <laughs> two one two or whatever, like and Paco Rabanne one million. They're made for one thing, do you know what I mean? They were made to be like sweet, spicy, big in the club. Everyone smell me, I smell gorgeous kind of thing. And then you had like these Sergio Tons that were like shaggy and stuff that were just like, this is this is not made for that. No. It's there was such a contrast compared to like what was popular at the time. Um yeah. 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 Uh, James, you know. uh, around that time were you getting into the whole um Lartisan thing and yeah, uh, well, it's interesting that, that you mentioned uh, um, Timbuktu because that was a really uh, pivotal sort of one. Um, I think because uh, had I, yeah, I mean, I travelled a, a little bit like in Europe, and I always tended to like saying about disposable income i didn't really have a, you know a great deal of money you know i had shit jobs and whatever like anybody else and I suppose from 2000 i was kind of like out of school in college I'd sort of had you know shit jobs and stuff so but i always kind of prioritized perfume as something that i would spend money on i didn't have the collection that i have today and a lot of things that i used up in the 2000s i feel a little bit like this is such an expansive topic i'm a little bit i'm a little bit overwhelmed by it to the point where i'm kind of like i'm not really saying no. a lot because i'm like i don't really know fucking where to start but i think like certainly timbuktu mentioning that so that was one that um i actually just tell a bit of a kind of story and I'm sort of well this is it i was asked <laughs> to do a um uh a thing for uh, Safflebon, right? So the lady from Safflebon, who's actually, you know, uh, all right yeah. and everything, I don't have a problem with her. Um, but she like, said, yeah, sure, you do, like, a thing if you, you know, want to talk about a perfume that was pivotal to your kind of experience and stuff. And then I realised that somebody else, who I'm not even going to bother mentioning, um, had already done the perfume that I wanted to do, which was Timbuktu. So I was like, oh shit, so I can't even write about the perfume that I wanted to write about, really. So I kind of sort of phoned it in with another one, um, which wasn't really my one, and maybe my article was a bit shit. And it got rejected and never got put on Safavon. What was the perfume you ended up writing about? No, that's. Okay. Uh, I ended up writing about um, ombre nuit. Oh right, to your ombre which nuit. I do love, and yeah. it was a good stand-in. Um, but I think there was probably you know too much like 
fart jokes or fucking references to <laughs> porn or fucking... Doesn't sound like you. No, know. or like serial killers or, you know, just, I don't know. I'd probably put some shit in that was fucking this offensive is, to, you know... This is extremely certain unexpected. Religions or, yeah. yeah. But anyway, no. Um, like I say, I'm, I'm fucking around, whatever, so, you know, but... Um, so in the 2000s, at that point, were you already like a, a perfume collector? Did you have like... Um, I probably had about thirty. Probably right, about okay. 30. I mean, that's mm. that's bonkers. I I, I say bonkers. I, I don't think I uh, ever had more than two or three bottles mm-hmm. at the same time um, until uh, probably about um, ten years ago. Oh, I say that ten yeah. years ago. That that must have been yeah. Uh, well, I mm. guess twenty tens, uh, mid twenty yeah. tens. Um, but uh, yeah, I, uh, you know, yeah, it was but some I, point. It was almost slightly I, I more meaningful. A, I a, like I used them. Do you know what I mean? I'd yeah. use them up. Yeah, I was. I was about to say the same thing. I had a. I'm looking at the case now because it's got something different in now. But I had an old fashioned, like wartime, uh, World War Two uh, D mob suitcase. Oh, yeah. That it, it was about, I suppose, two and a half feet long and a foot and a half wide, and it was absolutely full. So I had maybe fifty bottles, um, and I never, I never allowed myself to overflow the case. So if if I bought another bottle, that, that something else would have to go. Um, but I used them all and I wore them all regularly. Whereas now my collection is a lot larger. I don't think I... I don't love them in the same way. I don't... When I say love, I do love them, but I don't cherish them mm-hmm. in the same way. So those, like, some of those, like... So uh, Andrew's partner was a, a, a makeup artist and he would work in... Uh, all all like stores and also you know whatever doing his makeup stuff but he would often come home with partial bottles and partial testers mm. and if he didn't want them he'd give them to me nice and so that's how i got a lot of my early surgery tone a lot of my early l'artisan was you know gifts and whatever and i cherished them with a completely different feeling than i do now because they were so hard won. Yeah. And I knew that they were expensive, but also they were magical in this. The smell was so magical and so transporting in a different way to the, a lot of the designer stuff that I had. And I just, it was a very much a kind of open that opened the suitcase and it was all very much all my precious. Mm. It was definitely well, that feeling of that. That reminds me, actually, my, my sister did work uh, in retail and she did work at a perfume shop for quite a while. So I did get quite i don't know if she nicked it <laughs> i don't know but i did get quite a bit of stuff from her but it tended to be like designer things and i think mm. yeah in that sort of 2000s period just maintaining a collection was you know it, like I say there's just slightly more meaningful because you would use them up more and if i was quite because i had not that many flatmates, but I had a few different like flatmates and stuff, and uh, they would often either nick them off me, and I was kind of quite, mm. oh, you know, easy come, easy go, it's all right, I've got plenty more. But or someone would go, oh, I really like that or whatever, and I was quite keen to introduce them to stuff and go, yeah, this is amazing. And sometimes I give bottles away to people and stuff like that, and uh, just to get them onto something you know that they might not have have tried mm. or whatever. Um, so. Yeah, it was kind of like a nice like time, but also, yeah, I had a lot less, and I only really started like collecting properly probably at the end of that decade that we're talking about. So, yeah, um, mm. yeah. yeah, I think that too, I think, yeah. but I think also at that end of that decade is when things like eBay we got mm-hmm. really big. So there was a, I had a completely different relationship with eBay suddenly at the end of that decade. And then things like Facebook groups and things that I hadn't experienced before. So I think in, through a lot of the 2000s, I was still only going on what I could find in blogs. And there were so many blogs in a completely different yeah. way than there are now. Um, and there was really good writing. Mm. There were people writing really deeply long articles about new releases in a way that, you know, that, 200 or 300 word thing that you get on insta it just doesn't cut it and well, I, I i sort of love the fact that social media and the internet sort of democratized everything um i guess mm. the uh the downside 
is that you just have this kind of proliferation of of absolute fucking hacks. You know, the barriers to entry are <laughs> essentially zero, and anyone can be a self declared perfume reviewer. I mean, well, I was, myself as a case in fucking points, right? Um, All well, of us. I mean. Yeah, I mean, which is which is cool. Um, because um, I don't think any of us are, are claiming really to be uh, anything other than uh, sort of uh, in th- perfume enthusiast. Well, James... Oh, enthusiast. James is, oh, James, oh, no, James is holding James, his James, finger up. James is the <laughs> arbiter. Yeah, yeah. James is obviously the arbiter. But the rest of us are, are essentially uh, uh, perfume enthusiasts. Um, and, and you know, thank God for the internet that sort of created it. And I think you're right. It's, it's, it, it's one of the reasons that the 2000s is such a... Um, a strange era to talk about is because it's pre the sort of internet explosion. Um, it's uh, it's post the sort of heyday of um, you know the grand uh, designer uh, houses being all sorts of like. I don't know, uh, no budget restrictions, no material restrictions, no nothing. It's how you end up with, you know, perfumes like a Derby or a Balenciaga Pour Homme, and, you know, stuff like mm-hmm. that. So it's kind of after those sort of glory days, if you like. but Big classic yeah, glory but days. before the sort of democratisation of, of, of everything with uh, the internet. And certainly, um, I mean, I, I don't think I'm aware of any, anything that you'd call an indie perfumer. In, in that sort of uh, uh, age. I mean, were there indie perfumers making shit at home who then subsequently succeeded? Uh? I don't I don't know if I don't know of any because I don't know how they'd have got it out other than by hawking it round Wang it. church you halls. Needed the internet, you needed the I, internet yeah. to do it. So there were there were certainly independent perfumers working for things that then became niche, so like Bertrand Duchafour was really in his heyday and Antoine Lee had also just started as well and then, you know, all the Serge Leton stuff. But in terms of just like an indie perfume making something without a house behind it, I had, uh, there was nothing that I had that was like that at all. Maybe Mo- um, Mona Dorio, I did m- mention that one because um, yeah. she was mm. a perfumer and you would argue probably indie, but that, they kind of s- set up the, her own... Brand, I'm assuming. Um, I don't really know mm. the background of it, but I think that was the case. So there were some, but they weren't in the same way as now because they were probably trained perfumers who maybe had tried to work and then thought, oh, fuck it, I can't, like, you know, get a job in the industry or whatever. I'll make my own brand. And not a lot of those probably got traction, but a few did. Um, that's kind of one. I'll have to do a bit of research on her because I think that there was wasn't the, the word. There wasn't the word of. I mean, the word of mouth was just through the blogs. Really, there wasn't. There wasn't a way of anything. Yeah, like like you said, gaining traction or just like taking fire in the way that something can hit TikTok now or hit Insta now, mm. and relatively small companies can suddenly have quite a large following. That, that there was yeah. there was no opportunity for that okay. in the same way because you had to you had to advertise in magazines still. I um, don't want to sound like a grumpy old cunt, but I really think TikTok is a piece of shit. Um, I fucking <sighs> it, it's just it's awful. awful, and it's it's for kind of feckless fools with the attention span of a fucking newt kind of like go I think it, 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 just, it I think it, it it disseminates a lot of inaccurate uh information yeah, for no me shit. that's the thing that's the reason I don't but, bother uh, with it there's just so much inaccuracies on it well like the guy with his with his 80 percent full yeah. bottle <laughs> yeah. I was just like oh, um I think just, no um, yeah it's um the, the interesting thing about TikTok as well, uh, from a commercial point of view, is it drives vast, vast numbers of eyeballs to stuff, you know? It's really good at doing that. Um, but it's fucking children's eyeballs, and children don't have fucking don't have disposable money. income. Yeah. So if you're trying to fucking <laughs> hawk a, 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 you know, a £200 bottle of perfume, forget about it. Um, 
So, Are they just trying yeah. to get in with them young? So by the time when they have got money, it'll be like imprinted in them to. Yeah. Maybe it's yeah. a long strategy that they're going for. They're playing the long game, and uh, I, I, and I guess if if you're uh, like LVMH, you've probably got the pockets and 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 the will and uh, you know the need to mm. to even approach things in in that way. But if you are. Uh, you know, Johnny Kipper's minute perfume franchise from, you know, Bexley Heath or whatever, then you're going to fucking struggle uh, uh, to, to make any money. It makes everything feel so much more like like a, like a community. I would say like, turning everything into a positive is that, like, the Insta Boom. community or the Facebook community Boom. is amazing now. You know, I can, I can ask... I can put a, a shout out on oh, a group Facebook's or on, it, on Insta. Facebook is for old and people. And people will send me, people will send me samples of the thing that I need yeah. to smell. Whereas in the 2000s, I don't think anybody who's only just started collecting now would realise how lonely it was to collect <laughs> in the 2000s. Oh, so You're just literally doing it oh, on your own in your bedroom. And this is why I talk about my friend Andrew, because it was just felt like it was just like me and him I against the world, me and him sniffing Lutans or like Lartisan. It was just like, I found someone who... No, we didn't do, <laughs> we didn't do that. We didn't do that together. Um, but it, I found someone who had the same passion as me and it was just like let's hang on to each other for dear life because it was really hard to find someone that passionate about it. Right. Mean, so when Dan said about did we have uh, collections or whatever like, like I didn't really see it as a collection or anything like that because for me it was far more utilitarian until just, mm-hmm. just later and everything good. was just self I, I didn't read anything online like I had the mm. internet but I didn't read anything online or anything I just did everything was just like self like bouncing from one thing to the next um you know so for me it's like you know i discovered uh um vet for oriental purely because i discovered that it was vetiver that i liked the smell of and you know also another big one that i used to wear a lot in the uh, 2000s was um and actually i wore it last week on you know last thursday where it was really sunny and it was like felt like spring finally um in mm-hmm. jardin solanil by ms and i found mm-hmm. that because after having um uh ted ms i was like well what else do they do because this ms lot they seem to be quite yeah. good and so then i discovered in jardin Solanil and in jardin uh après le mousson and stuff like that and eau de Mave as well um you know all from ted ms um yeah but so for me it was all like sort of self-discovering like that branching out rather than sort of reading whereas now you know i if i want to know what's like decent i just go on instagram for five minutes or have mm-hmm. a quick browse on the groups and you know gives me an idea of what to <laughs> yeah. But, um, yeah, if i want to find out was decent i read all about those things on those things and then i just get them by the yeah. opposite yeah. <laughs> but, but back then it was much more of like an organic process of like you know just what was in your grasp so, just yeah. going to the next I, thing. I always saw I mean, I remember seeing adverts for perfume, but I always saw regarded perfume as broadly being um, just a thing that smelt nice that got marketed. I it, it didn't even occur to me that people talked about it or people wrote about it or people were passionate about it. It was like, oh, yeah, I've always known that I really like the smell of things and I've always sort of been into this idea of perfumes I've always liked the smell, but I don't think I ever really sort of got the idea that, that hang on, kind of to your, your music concert thing, Ben, that, that, mm. that people, you know, this was a lifestyle thing or this was actually a hobby that, that, that ran deeper than just does this actually smell nice. Um, and mm. uh, the, the first... I remember reading in a magazine an interview with Will I Am, who is a preposterous twat. Um, but I, I remember reading the, the the journalist said to him, "You smell amazing. What is that?" And he said, "It's Ted Hermes." Um, and that must have been like two thousand six, two thousand seven. He was probably pushing his latest pile of shit album. Um, and and I think that was the first time it actually occurred to me that people actually maybe talk about this thing it, you know it wasn't just some sort of like i don't know it, it, almost like i sort of saw it as like just a, 
a commoditized product before that. It was like, oh yeah, just you. Mm. There's there's fifty different tins of baked beans, and you know they taste slightly different. You find the one you like. That's the one you buy. That's it. You know that that's perfume. And then uh, yeah, just to hear some some journalist uh, write a, a question to to some musician about it as though this was somehow relevant. You know, this is an interesting thing. Uh, and I don't know, that that just sort of blew my mind. Don't know why. But I think also as well, there, there was, it's exactly during the 2000s where all of these other, like these, and I keep saying the same niche houses mm-hmm. again and again and again, but the idea of collecting of having more than one and having a wardrobe became much more um, acceptable as well in terms of reading the the blogs and stuff. It became clear to me that other people had more than just a signature scent and that there were people that had collections, which was really interesting. It was relevant. Mm. I think I was still... I think I was still sort of blown away. I, 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 I still didn't even really dig the concept of spending lots of money on perfume until I found through Facebook the the sort of mm-hmm. online perfume communities, and immediately I, I saw adverts for people selling, you know, uh, you know, ten ten mil of this and. You know, this thing for 47 pounds. 47 pounds? Are you fucking mad? Are you <laughs> mad? That's like a week's food. Uh, I yeah. bet that smells really fucking good, though. <laughs> like, getting it and going, no, oh, that smells fucking weird as shit. Well, that's terrible. Um, yeah, just uh, that, that whole thing just never really even occurred to me until uh uh you know the 2010s if you like um but mm-hmm. but the 2000s i was definitely still wearing perfume i thought of another one which i, I wore a lot of which was gucci pour on uh one um yeah. and if i'd mm. <clears throat> oh. I think they were, yeah well if oh. i'd known how valuable that was going to become as well. I just fucking bought like the entire shelf, you know, this would have been a good strategic investment. Um, as it happened, I just sort of rinsed my way through a few bottles of it. And I, I remember having a bottle of that. Well, I have several bottles of that. I remember the first time I smelt it, I was, we finished a show. It was in the, it was in Covent Garden after kind of like post theatre beers and the cast were all around the table and we all, the last orders had been called and we were, they were being ushered out for closing. And one of the guys who was in the show had left his gloves on the table and I picked them up. And even just picking them up for him, I could smell the Gucci Purim. And I remember lifting them to my face and sniffing them and going, oh, my God. Boy, your gloves smell mm. nice. Well, yeah, and I handed them to... When we got outside, it was quite cold, and I remember handing them to him and just going... They they smell amazing. That what is that? And he told me, and I was just the next day. I was just at Debenhams or wherever, just spraying wasn't, it all over myself. Just going, oh, smell the Jesus. glove. An album by Spinal Tap. <laughs> <laughs> yes, <laughs> I, I think it was. Yeah, sniff my yeah. finger. <laughs> yeah. No, that was a very different album. Speaking um, of, um, yeah, uh, panty dropper fragrances. Um, oh yeah, or you know, those kind of things. Um, what's it came out in? Was it two thousand some mid two thousands maybe? Um, uh, Yves Saint Laurent, the one, uh, the ne- um, Le Nuit de l'Homme. Ah, Le Nuit de l'Homme. So mm. that I think one, that was like two thousand. I want to I say want to seven. Say like 2000 and, oh, I wanted to say 2009. Oh, you might be right. You might be right. Um, if it is, it just I'll, gets in, doesn't it? So. It just squeaks in. But, yeah, that is that is an out-and-out out panty dropper. Mm. I mean, every time I wear that, I just, you know, I can't move the women hurling their underwear at me. It's <laughs> like, it's, it's embarrassing. Well, the told. weirdest thing is I played in a band at the time, and I won't. Say who the person is. Doesn't fucking listen to this anyway. But 
uh, he said to me, oh, you're like dead into perfumes, aren't you, and stuff. And I was like, yeah. And he goes, oh, Le Nuit de l'Homme, mate. Absolute fucking pussy. They love it. <laughs> right? And, uh, pussy loves it. Yeah, but... loves it. Oh, loves I'm it. sold, mate. And I was sold. like, yeah, I think it's, you know, it's, don't, don't do yourself a disservice, mate. I think it's you. I think it's your, you know, <laughs> sort of progressive attitude and, you know, the way you... Uh, <laughs> It's your Um, winning personality. Yeah, Yeah, exactly. No, do you know what? He wasn't the kind of person to, he wasn't like that. And it was weird that he said that. I'm, I'm, I'm sort of, you know, um, he didn't really say it in those words. I was saying it to be funny, but no, he said something similar of like every, like every chick I've ever like, you know, they all love it and they fucking all this kind of stuff. And I was like, that's not my motivation. That's not why I have a cup for. I'm not looking for the one. Do you know what I mean? I'm not trying to find mm. this like, you know, magic elixir. And I was like, I have actually already got that one. And yeah, you know, it's very nice and stuff. But I remember him good like banging on about how, how like women loved it basically. Um, but yeah, that's one. And like Reeve Gauche, the men's Reeve Gauche, because uh, oh, I mean, the yeah. f- no women's Reeve Gauche came out in like the fucking 70s or some shit, didn't it? And then they waited mm. till the 2000s to do a men's one. It's like, mm, okay. Um, but I suppose they've been sort of rehashing that kind of shit for years, haven't they? But um, no, that, I mean, that is a that is a great perfume. I think that was early 2000s, mm. was it? Mid 2000s? Mm. I'm so shit at this, mm. right? I saw it on the little list that I was... Oh, I think Reeve Ghosh was. I think Reeve Ghosh yeah. was 2000. But it doesn't have to have been released in the 2000s, I guess. It can just, just have be to something be worn. that you were wearing. Right. Well, I was yeah. wearing a lot of my you know, 90s shit and stuff. So, I, 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 To be honest, I, uh, I remember having a bottle of Hugo Boss number one in the, in the 2000s. Mm. I, I have a, a, a still have an original uh, Hugo Boss uh, 2000. Uh, and I will say, I don't really believe in, uh, you know, panty droppers and all that jazz. But um, for women uh, above a certain age, uh, the original Hugo Boss certainly brings out a lot of uh, favourable compliments. Uh, I'll, uh, I'll say that. You said with a wry uh, smile. Favourable compliments. Fa- favourable compliments, yes. Yes. I mean, if you want, I mean, to be honest, if you want fucking compliments, just buy fucking Aventus and be done with it, right? People are always going to go, oh, you smell amazing. What is it? And, do you know what? It's Aventus. Do you know what? Weirdly enough, the other day, I came home, right, and on the kitchen floor, there was a little vial of that Aventus, Absolute Aventus, that I've worn twice now. Oh, yeah. And I went, mm-hmm. yeah, it's all right. It's just kind of not as good Aventus thing. And it was on the floor, and it had a little bit left in it. I think it had been, like, falling out of the washing machine or something. I don't know, but it was on the floor. Mm. I didn't bother picking it up, because I was like, oh, fuck it, I'm going to bed. Right? <laughs> so, anyway, it's laying on the floor. <laughs> and then the next, it there. Yeah, I just left it there. And then the next day... Um, we went out somewhere, can't even remember, and I was sat with Jenny and we were at something and it was in the evening and we'd like had a nice evening and such. And I was like, fucking hell, I could, sm- I could smell, um, I said I could smell someone's perfume all the way through it and it was like doing my head in because it was really strong. I could smell Aventus like the whole time and I thought that lad over there has put far too much fucking Aventus on, I can smell it. <laughs> and then Jenny was like, it was Jenny. It she was, was like, Jenny. Oh no! I found that vial in the in the kitchen this morning. And I put it on, so I was like, "Oh right!" And then weirdly, like she went to say like night to me or something, and she smelled totally different. So I didn't think it was that. It had a kind of mm. almost like an irisy, leathery sort of thing that wasn't the the event. So maybe that does have some other depths to it that I don't know. Um, but uh, yeah, it was it was yeah. her who smelled Aventus. <laughs> um, did you enjoy it? Did yeah, you I did. Like it? You can't not like yeah. that. Do you you know what I mean? Exactly. It's, a, it's bloody exactly. good Does fragrance. Does anyone smell a Ventus and go, oh, no, that's disgusting, man. <clears throat> yeah. I hold my nose and I... People don't do it. No. It smells fucking good. You want compliments by that. Or fucking Sauvage, maybe. Maybe. But I think, you know... To be fair, if you want compliments that desperately, just hire a sex worker. Yeah. Like, have the girlfriend experience. You'll get far more out of it. Yeah, I, 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 I agree me. entirely. I agree entirely. It's always nice to be a, a sm- I told you smell You have to pay nice, extra but, for the um, girlfriend experience, don't you? So I've heard. Yeah. <laughs> so she got A-levels. Okay, well. well she do A-levels. <laughs> <laughs> Um, 
Anyway, so. right before this goes down a rather uncomfortable <laughs> rabbit hole, um, I think I'll. He's beginning to blush again, Georgina. No, blushing, I'm <laughs> fucking tired of trying to keep you fuckers on sick on of our shit. Um, He's totally sick of our shit. I am sick of your shit. Yes. Um, no, before uh, we disappear down yet another rabbit hole, I think we should uh, uh, bring it into land. What I want from each of you is one perfume you would put in your fucking uh, uh, time capsule for the 2000s to say, yep, if I had to pick one that I wore the fucking balls off, what would it be? Um, and I'm going to be predictable and say, Tedemez. Ben. Are you going to be that predictable too? Yeah, it has to be Ted Demers. I, I don't want it to be. I want it to be Vetiver and Tail, but the truth is I didn't have the money to wear it as much as I had the money to wear Ted Demers. Mm. So it's got to be Ted yep. Demers. Good. Uh, Fliss? One. Premier Figure. Premier Figure by uh, L'Artisan. It was actually released before the 2000s, but that's when I discovered it and I was wearing a lot nice. of it. Nice. James? Uh, I'm going to have to say Tim Book 2. Awesome. Mm. Serious stuff. Right, well, the, the, the Lesodes 2000s time capsule includes, uh, what is it, Fig what? Fig? Fimbia. Premier Figure. Premier Figure. By Lattizan. Tim Book 2 and Ter Dermes. That is, uh, two Lattizans though, that's quite impressive. Uh, I mean, uh, yeah. you know. It's oh, a very vetiver right. heavy uh, time capsule. It was a vetiver heavy time. Mm. Um, I, I think that's okay. Uh, I, a lot of grass. Mm. Yeah, a lot of grass. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and Ket. Good, right. Um, <laughs> 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 You're never going to let that down. The Ket queen of uh, Les no, no, no. uh Fliss. <laughs> right, um, I would uh, like to say I've had... I got a really funny story about Cat actually. Uh, <laughs> now it's not the time. He's I, trying to wrap up. No, I, 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 I think I want to hear it. I think <laughs> I want to hear it. Does it involve so you saying out loud you wouldn't mind getting pegged in a bar? It, it, something along those lines, but better, right? <laughs> really? or, or, depending on how you look <laughs> no, at it, right? How can it be worse? better? So my mate is in this grotty fucking basement flat, right? And we, we, we took a load of Ket one night, and then we decided to go to the park, and it was like, it took us hours to walk there and back, because everything was like... Of course it fucking did, like, mate. Flat, you don't leave the house you after were, you've taken you it. smashed yeah. off your fucking <laughs> head, <laughs> not because everything was flat. Yeah. Yeah. And then that night, I stayed at his flat with my partner, well, girlfriend at the time, right? And we were, like, getting down to it, right? And we're having sex and our belly button rings got oh caught together. And, oh stuck. No. and we were both smashed off pet and going, like, <laughs> oh, what's going on? <laughs> <laughs> and we were both like thin as sticks as well. So it was like, stop laughing because it really hurt. <laughs> because the belly buttons were just pulling. Yeah, that was. Anyway. <laughs> fucking final idiot. Note. <laughs> <laughs> fucking absolute. I that's that is yeah. stupid. I've yeah. never heard anything so utterly stupid in my life. Um, on, on, on that. I mean, it's a bad enough situation without the cat. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> well, I, 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 yeah, that, I mean, that would be really difficult anyway. But when everything's really, really big and really, really small and very, very far away and very, very close all at the same time, <laughs> getting uh, your belly button rings out of your, each other's belly button rings must have just been uh, mental. Uh, arguably, without the cat. Yeah. We thought we were going to have to ask someone to come and help. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe get an ambulance. Uh, <laughs> what's happened to these morons? Well... There. <laughs> Unfortunately, one 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 didn't exist at that time, did yeah. it? You could have got on the phone. I'm that would have sure been they'd have a hilarious. flow chart for that one. Uh, <laughs> uh, I need to ask you some questions. They may sound a bit sort of uh, uh, daft, but firstly, is the patient breathing? Yes. <laughs> right, okay. Take a left on the flow chart. How do we exactly navigate to belly buttons locked? Yeah, I think arguably, Ben, uh, the ketamine, uh, you would not have got them locked together. Uh, in the first place, um, <laughs> and certainly you would have been able to uncouple them better yourself. How did the situation resolve itself eventually, Ben? 
just natural forces just i think just, just eventually just it just sort of happened it was all right okay yeah. okay kids well look if you get your belly buttons uh, sort of locked together natural forces uh, and ketamine we'll see you through just, just relax yeah, just... <laughs> which is easy to do if you're yeah, on just relax yeah that's very funny advice. enough that's probably what that they would prescribe advice. you at the hospital if you went in now we just need to relax you a little bit Mr. <laughs> Peltmar um, here take this ketamine right on that stupid stupid <laughs> stupid finale point um, I'm going to wrap this bullshit up um, we have as ever been the Zodrants we will be back in probably two weeks uh, if I can get these idiots to stop taking drugs until then have a very <laughs> lovely perfume time bye bye bye, bye. bye.